call. I've got everybody here except for Emily Roos and Paul Cass. Paul sent me an email this morning. Oh, and Bob. Um, Bob um, Paul sent me an email and said he was feeling sick this morning, didn't think that he was going to make it. So he said if he did, great. But if he didn't, don't be surprised. So he's excused. And there is some confusion over the time of the meeting. I guess it was posted for 6.30, even though we've been talking about doing it at 6 o'clock. Um, so I don't know if, if that's why Emily's not here. Um, but I think instead of having everybody sit here for half an hour, uh, we should move forward unless anybody has an objection to that. Okay. Um, I also have to apologize. I thought I had forwarded the minutes around to the group, but clearly I did not. So we won't be uh, approving the minutes tonight since I didn't circulate them, and we'll do that. In case anybody, sorry to interrupt, in case anybody wanted to see them. And here's copies of the minutes if anybody would like to see them now. I got them. You got them? I did send them. I thought I did. I didn't get them. What time did you take them up? I guess we got it on like, Sunday, I think. When? Yeah, I said it was Sunday. Is that around? No, it was the meeting was no. at 6. At, eight, at 524, maybe you sent them? Today? Mm -hmm. No, no, I didn't send them today. Okay. I sent them around when. I thought I sent them on Sunday, but. Um, that, uh, no. I'm sorry. It was the agenda. Okay. So, that was the agenda. Yeah. All right. Sorry for the confusion. So, so we will review the minutes um, with these minutes at the next meeting. Um, with that, the next item is uh, a presentation for the 2020 budget for the Rollins Street Water and Sewer Department. And then, hey, Bob. I'll chat and, uh, we have Vern. If Vern, if you want to come to the table and, and present, I think you've all got a copy of the uh, proposed budget. And a, and a breakdown. He's inviting. You make a motion that you speak. I'll make a motion. I, I don't think we need that. Yeah. We, we've not had that for any, any other department. I think we need to speak. That's what we're for. Uh, Very good. All right. I'm just going to make it now. Personnel from proposed warrant articles. So you 
see it in three sections. Okay. The operational expenses, if you will notice, over time have not really increased all that much. What we have for our preliminary proposed budget for 2019 pretty much tracks close to what was proposed in 2019, our current year. Okay. We'll pause now, let everybody sort of absorb that. Yeah, I do have a question. Um, yes. Is this when we're comparing? I know that during the annual meeting the budget was reduced by yes. a set amount. Eighty thousand. Yes. Right. And is, is this what was? Uh, reviewed and approved by the Budget Committee last year, or is this a modified based on that reduction? The 2019 column yep. is what was proposed and approved by the Budget Committee. Yep. Okay. That's not your authorized budget, is that what you're saying? That's correct. So why aren't we seeing your authorized budget? Because we had because the cuts were made in sort of broad categories. So we couldn't say, all right, we're going to reduce this line and that line and that line. We just, we wanted to compare what was proposed last year with what is proposed for the upcoming year. And then let the voters decide what they want. I just, I understand. I, I don't like it. Can I say I don't like it? I mean, everyone else comes to us with their, with their currently authorized budget. That's not what we're seeing. Can I ask what the bottom line is, the currently authorized budget for 2019 for wastewater? Um, Instead of 246, 469? Subtract 50,000 plus 15,000. Yes. Could you do that, please? I can't. Not right now. I don't have a computer with me. So 236. Right. Less another fifteen thousand. Two forty six, four sixty nine, less sixty five thousand. It's two forty seven, four sixty nine. Huh? It can't be. It's, it's, it's two nineteen. So it shows two forty seven, one four sixty nine. Uh -huh. Where Where are you looking? Are we in Are oh, we in sewer? At the bottom, yeah. Three seven. I was looking at the operational cost. So it's three seventy six, eight forty one minus. Sixty-five thousand. I'm working from memory here, which isn't as great as it used to be. So we're looking at what? Three hundred and eleven. Yeah, three hundred and eleven. That sounds right. Eight forty-one. Oh, that. And the reason that that's significant is because that is an increase. What you're proposing, just and I'm not yeah. saying it's wrong, or I'm not making any judgments on it, but it is an increase over your currently authorized budget, yes. and not pretty much even, which is what you said. Yes. Thank you. What? No, I was asking if there are any other questions. That will appear again over here in water, but here you would subtract 50,000. I'm there? sorry. No. Five zero? Fifteen. One five zero zero zero. So the fifty comes out of sewer budget and fifteen comes out of water budget. No, it's not zero. So it's an additional fifteen. So it's three forty four. Thank you. So now you've got to do this. Thank you. 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 Bernie, okay. could you just clarify the sixty-five thousand again? Fifty thousand was cut for the wastewater. Okay, that was by. Fifteen thousand was cut from pro share administrative split between the two. Oh, thirty thousand, thirty thousand. Sorry. Yeah, but but then fifteen to each side is that correct? Right? Okay. So only 15 was taken out of sewer pro share wastewater. Oh, that's okay. Sorry. It's, it's, it's 50 yeah. plus 15 is 65. Out of and then on the sewer. water side, it was 15. And now it's coming out of the pro share piece. Uh, yes, essentially. Right. Yeah. 
And I understand because when when the budget was authorized in <coughs> March, it was a just lump take out eighty thousand dollars total or whatever it was. Um, and it wasn't take out from these line items, and so that's why we don't really have a comparison, an updated so comparison right. by line. Mm -hmm. Line you by can line. only take from the bottom line, line. right? That's and there are three categories in the, in the water sewer district because it's very simple. It's administrative, wastewater, and water. Fifty thousand was taken from wastewater. Nothing was taken from water per se, operational cost, and thirty thousand was taken out of the administration portion. Okay. Thanks. Um, are there, is there any um, presentation that you'd like to give on the line, you know, line by line, or would you like just to open it up? For sure. they, if you look at them, they pretty much track except. Capital improvements uh, for the plant, for the collection system, they're, they're looking at doing some upgrades. Um, let's see, what is the trash removal? No, no, no. It's legal. We expect some more legal problems in the coming year. So we expect we're going to have more legal problems. We have a pending situation that we're going to have to deal with. The 25000 for other is we're going to do a lot more engineering and a lot less fly by the seat of our pants. We're going to insist that any major increase other than worn articles be engineered first and then built, not built and then engineered as we are currently having it happen. Um, you want to explain some of the stuff that you've got proposed that we have for the next year? Or why we do the engineering? Like, will we start well, some of them are always not water now, so. <clears throat> so in the, in the um, other professional services, the $25,000 is compared to $300 set aside last year is for an engineering uh, by uh, Wright Pierce. And I noticed that you also have, well maybe this, so this is just sewer, I'm sorry, I, or wastewater. Uh, I noticed in your capital improvements there was an engineering line there too. And this, but is that just for our system? Capital, the capital improvement plan is just a set aside for future. Rather than constantly have to pull it in out of uh, current budget or borrowing, we want to start setting money aside, like the town does, like the school does. Right. I guess what was confusing is you have Willie Street, Porter Wells, General John Sullivan. Now, says, wait a minute. You're in the water now. Right. That's Just what I was saying. Stay with, I think that's we've got to stay with wastewater, please. We'll flip over the page in a minute. Yes? I think uh, hiring engineering studies are... Contracting for, contracting for engineering studies is a really, really good thing, and I commend them. Before it's built. Exactly. Yes. Vern, I have a question about the rates down below. Yes. What What are we looking at? Is that... Is if, that you take, if you take that total budget, let's stick with wastewater. Okay. You take that total budget, 402,077, and you divide it into the number of units that we bill currently. The average wastewater fee per quarter would be $217 and some change. Is that an increase or decrease? A massive time? increase. Can you tell me what it has been? Uh, it's been $145 per quarter. Thank you. This goes along with what DPS wanted yeah. to begin with. DPS made that very clear abundantly clear. They want us to increase our rates and do a lot more upgrades. upgrades. So you're you're taking the total usage in the district and you're dividing by the amount of people, is that what you just said? No. 
Say the total please. budget, the total proposed budget. Yeah. Dividing it to the number of units that we build. Okay. Which is 463 for wastewater. Okay. Gives you $217.10 per quarter per unit. Now, some will be lower than that, some will be much higher than that. Because you're going by usage then? No, we're not going by That's proposed. This is based on our current rate structure of billing, based on the $15,000, 15,000 gallons per quarter minimum charge. Yeah. Well, some people use way more, more than that. Right, right. So, and some use way less. So would you go, would you use, would you charge the ones that are less? Unless uh, it Again, you have to go through 500 and we have to go through 463 households and we calculate it if you do it based on a consumption basis. Oh, you right. don't do a consumption basis now? No. You do no, it by no. the total budget? Well, sort of. But it's really, if you use 6,000 gallons, you pay for 15,000 gallons. Correct. Last year. But if I, use, if I use 18,000 gallons, then I pay for 18,000 gallons of water. Yes, you pay one. Well, if it were water... Well, I know, but I don't have sewer, so that's yeah, why I said but Okay. you would be charged for 3,000 gallons at $6.16 more. Yeah. Well, that's sort of a consumption basis, but it starts at a very high level. So sewer is, <laughs> is calculated similar to like water does. Based it is on based your, on water. It's, <coughs> it's based on water. Okay. Yeah. So it's... How do you, do you, do you have two different meters? No. How do you know? The assumption person? is that if I use 15,000 gallons, it all goes down to the wastewater plant. Okay. That's the assumption. Okay. Now, some people use massive amounts of water, and I suspect it's because they're irrigating their gardens and their lawns and filling their swimming pools. And we've got to start talking to people about, you need a separate meter for that. Okay. Because otherwise, we're assuming all that stuff is coming down the wastewater plant. Okay. And we have to charge you for it. So there's a, excuse me, just to uh, clarify my okay. mind. Uh, there's like a 15,000 gallon that everybody's paying for from the start. And then if somebody pay, is using more than 15,000, then they pay some $6.16 per thousand gallons thereafter. thereafter. Right. Unless they're commercial. And then they'd pay $6.16 starting at zero. Gotcha. Charlie, do you have a question? That Charlie. I was just saying, uh, you you arbitrarily pick the 15000 to just make it work. So no, we have to, well, I mean, years and years. Yeah. Decades. It, it, decades. Got, it got picked because <clears throat> some people use more for gardens or whatever, some people don't, or, or you just need that number to make it work. Uh, I have no idea how they came to that um, I've been talking to um, Ken Shorey, and he said, you know, back then it made no difference because you paid $10 per quarter for your water. I remember when it was $18 per quarter. Yeah. I thought that was outrageous. Hmm. Yeah. Is there other... other uh, I have a question. Um, I don't see, I may be missing something here, but I don't see anything uh, budgeted for maintenance and repairs. How is that? Yes. On the water. Um, We're still water on budget. wastewater. Yeah. Uh, Page one. Stay oh, on you got to stay on the budget. budget. I will wait on that question. Yes. It says maintenance repairs plant, maintenance repairs collection system. Yeah. They've got it, like $18,000 total. Mm -hmm. Now they're just basic stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't on the original. Uh, referring back to the I know, that's budget. why we that said, was the mistake. Well, who yeah. would I use Got this it. one, please? Actually, no, that was there. Doesn't but, matter. Okay. Um, my attention is now on the right page. Yep. Um, so, I have a question about the 25 and the other versus the contractor work. It sounds 25. like that. So the 25000 in the other line? Well, um, other HDA. including HTA, fire protection, and yeah. inspection. That's engineering. Okay, so what's that? It sounds like the engineering would be contracted out, so I just don't understand the difference between contractor work and what other is and why that money wouldn't be in contractor the contractor work line. 
Oh, this is the contractor. The contractor is. Um, what's his name? Hoyt. No, Hoyt. Oh, Hoyt. He's a subcontractor. He basically does things like uh, plumbing work, um, installing. Okay. He's an outside contractor. So it's a different. But it, it's, it's not. It's not a professional engineer. Got it. It's. Okay, I was missing the other professional services header on that section there. Sorry. Right. My fault. I guess so. <coughs> are you, are you yeah. anticipating coming in, coming in within budget? The, the budget yes. that the meeting... This year? Yeah, the budget yes. that the meeting approved on. We instituted some very strict control systems, which had better be observed. Is there any way to bring the legal fees down? They were unanticipated. Yes, there are. It seems like twenty thousand is sort of oh well, ten thousand on this budget and ten thousand on the next. Uh, it seems as if uh, those all, problems almost all of them are addressed. Personal. Almost all personnel issues. And you're anticipating spending another twenty. No, there are other legal problems we're anticipating. You see, the problem in life is anybody can sue you. They may not prevail, but you still have to defend yourself. I don't. I think previous budgets were quite considerably lower. I think the thing that I'm questioning here is how, for many years, there were no legal fees totaling what they're totaling right now. So um, the curious thing about lawsuits and that they hadn't previously been a problem is what I'm looking at and asking about. Is there some way to avoid that particular expense in this budget? Theoretically, there is. We could get rid of the problem, but it would cost us legally. We would ultimately prevail, but we would still have to defend ourselves. Can we move over to water now? Is, that Is there concerning? salaries in this one? Huh? Is there salaries here? Personnel expenses. You saw personnel expenses? Is that what the that that's? Just salaries and not anything else? It's uh, stipends for the commissioners. Here is payroll information from this year. You can take one. Oh, not that last page. Did the expenses that were reduced in last year, last year's at March's meeting, did they end up then getting built back into the budget? The well, eighty thousand that was taken out of it, did that end up then this year getting built built back into this operating budget? If you that look at the budget, I'm and, looking at it, and you see the proposed amount, the total bottom line three seventy six eight forty one. This was before the cuts. Granted, mm -hmm. and then you look at the proposed for next year. It's off five thousand dollars. The difference is a thousand dollars. It That's is the feeling of the commissioners that the voters should make this decision, not us. And the, so excuse me. The voters should make the decision about what term. About what the budget should be. The commission. They are ultimately the deciders. Well, you are the recommenders of the budget, are you not? So is this the budget that you're recommending? Yes. This is the budget we're going to recommend before the voters, yes. And are you going to present it such that there's no significant increase from this year to last year, like you've done to the, to the budget committee? There is an increase. 
there, there's only a slight increase of five thousand. Well, no, there's no, no, no. I'm talking about the, the the budget that was authorized at the meeting is three hundred eleven thousand and eight forty one. Right. Is that what you're going to make sure that the meeting sees, and not not this other figure that was not real because it was voted down by the meeting? Right. Well, this the way it was put in was proposed budgets. I can I can go back and change it to authorized budgets. I think that that's, as a commi okay, budget committee fine. members, I what I would have assumed you were going to be showing us is what was the authorized budget that you've been working under, and how is this, how is your proposed budget different from your authorized budget? So we could take a look at it. I'll make a change. Thank you. So can you explain what kind of percentages or lump sum increases that you gave to the staff? We didn't give any increase. Well, no, wait a minute. We did give one person two dollars <laughs> per hour. Two dollars. Two dollars an hour increase. One uh, per the upgrade. Tom Supreme. Okay, so nobody else is getting a raise. No. Is there a reason for that? Did you see the numbers? Well, I know, but no, we were not question. planning on giving any raises. So far, you would say that. The, the, you, you feel that the rates, the gross wages that the people are earning are market yes, rates are earning, right. therefore yes. not necessarily yes, higher than market for anything else. In some cases, way over market. Okay. So, how do you, uh, I'm sorry, the total uh, personnel expenses of two hundred and seventy six thousand and some change, is that correct? So how do you separate them? Because that's if you look on your sheet, the top part is operational staff. Those are operators. Which which sorry, which sheet am I looking at? It's the single sheet that you got. Okay. You see operators, superintendent, and so forth. And then there's a break, and then you have the clerk and the treasurer, and then the stipend for the commissioners. And then the Social Security taxes that are related to them. Right. Other I, benefits. Oh, is the split up for two pages? Yes. Well, how, how do you make the split from one half? Is it exactly up now? Yes. Oh, thank you. That's the way it's done. He gets a truck allowance, he gets his gas paid for, he gets his maintenance, and he gets a snow plow allowance. Okay, and he still gets, if this is proposed, that he's still going to get that? Yes. Okay. And then, and he's the only one that gets retirement? Yes. Does that mean he's the only full-time employee? No. No. Are you... Aren't you supposed to provide, if you were to provide retirement to your full-time employees, that is supposed to be all of your full-time employees? Uh, oh, not according to IRISA. <coughs> what about the State Department of Labor? Huh? What about the State Department of Labor and the, the State, State Retirement System? I'm done. We don't have to join the State Retirement System. <coughs> The town doesn't have everybody who is a full-time employee in the state retirement system. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. All full-time employees? Yes. Yes. Well, we didn't join the New Hampshire state retirement system. It's done privately. I see. Okay. That's the answer then. But it doesn't seem quite kosher. Well, um, we had... Our lawyer researched it, and they checked with ERISA, the employment something, the law, the federal part of it that covers, and because we're a municipality, we don't follow the same rules. We don't have to follow the same so rules. So there will be no case for your other full-time employee, employees 
to, to sue the water district for discriminatory behavior in the, in the application of benefits. Is that Our do you feel? Our attorney feels confident that because we're a municipality and we meet the research rules, we're okay. But at, one of those employees could sue, in which case you'd be in that case of needing to defend. Is that right? Okay, thank you. Well, would it be less expensive? Would it be less expensive to cover the benefit than to pay for legal fees? You know, I mean, the, the trade-off here. Well. Maybe it comes out to zero in the budget. Maybe it's a wash, and it's just a more fair practice. Um, we are stewards, and we have prudential responsibilities to the ratepayers, and we have to consider what are we required to do versus what we could do. We have to weigh those. I saw a hand up over here. Yeah, I was going to ask on your wages, your 276,190 divided by 2 is not 131. That's 138. So there are other items that are part of this, that are part of wages, that are actually in the administrative costs, like the extra benefits for the superintendent are not included in the wage base, which is a mistake, actually. They should be part of the wages. Just kind of misleading. Well, yeah, but we still wanted to compare apples to apples from year to year. So. Is there a way that you can present it such that you know, normal, naive end users could tie these figures back to each other? As you can see, it's complicated. Yep. It doesn't help us if if things go like this, and then you know. It, so if there was a way that you could just pick a foot <coughs> or something that would help us, it would be appreciated. And I'm sure that the same would be true of the for the public hearing for the budget committee. We we will try, but apparently before um, this year. Some of the practices and procedures were sort of just let it go. Yeah, just don't let it go. We inherited an interesting series of practices, some of which were not compliant with federal or state law and have had to be repaired. We fixed. So um, the fifteen thousand you described it as a uh, payment for a truck, a uh, plow, uh, and ma and uh, maintenance, gas and maintenance. Would it be a, a helpful for the for the district to purchase a truck so that an employee or employees are not having to use their own vehicles to do things like plowing and that sort of thing? Yes. Or you know, I mean, it's a trade off. It's an expense. Is it reasonable to expect that those are reasonable fees for um, paying somebody to use their personal vehicle because the district doesn't have one. I'm just, I'm trying to understand um, where the concern about that 15000 if that wasn't there because someone was using their truck, would it mean that the district would have to provide one? That's a better way to ask the question. Historically, what the district did was they paid mileage. And I'll stop right there. Because now I'm getting close to where our legal people says, shut up. I can hear it in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'd love to buy a truck, but that would add to the bottom line. And I'm trying to keep the bottom line at least close to reality, close to sustainability. Are there questions for Susan? Well, but the truck, the purchase of a truck, it's a capital expense and it's amortized or whatever over a number of years. So if you look at those the yearly installments, it could very well though be less than what your the outlay is for the, for the person to use his or her own truck. Absolutely true. It's his. But if we look at the bottom line, especially when we get over into the water department, because this all gets combined into one number. Sure. Um, we're already struggling with capital items. 
So I like the buy cup, but I look at other priorities. So perhaps another year. Uh -huh. Perhaps another year it might rise to the surface. Is that well the truck again? That's why in both in both these budgets there's a twenty five thousand dollar SIP. Now we may designate some of it at some future point as vehicle. But right now we've got to start putting this money away so that we start saving for those big ticket items we're going to need. So then the capital improvement plan, the $25,000 for each <coughs> is undesignated at the moment. It's just going... Yes. Okay. <coughs> Are there restrictions on what the capital improvement plan can be used for? Capital yeah. yeah. Well, it's so Sam can explain it, you know, it's, it's generally got to be a fairly substantial item. Um, no, I just wanted to make sure it was a true capital um, yeah. SIP fund as opposed to just a... You can't use it for, like, wages. You can't use it for current... Tells you. Huh? Right. The DRA will tell you if... Uh, yeah, yes. right. Yeah. You can't use it for current operating expenses. You need a warrant article to take that twenty-five thousand out, right? Right, or any part of it. Any part, any part of it. Yes. Ready to move on to water? Yeah. Any more questions on this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Again. Back, uh, fifteen thousand of this has to be come from the proposed part to the authorized to make it the authorized number. But as you can see, the operational expense actually is pretty close to the same, except the big ticket item is um, arsenic treatment. Did I get that on the correct line? Okay. One day, the media that is used at Porter Wells is going to no longer take out arsenic or won't take it out efficiently and will have to be replaced. And it's basically like changing the filtration medium in your home swimming pool. You have to replace it. It stops filtering. And so we, the superintendent recommended that we put 15000 in there just in case because it's a big slug item. <coughs> And if you look down through the rest of it, you see Wright Pearson Engineering. This is, again, engineering. There are certain things that we would like to investigate, including water chemistry. We'd like to go back and revisit that. Because if we're getting uh, tuberculation building up in the pipes, and it's because of water chemistry changes, we want to take another look at that. At least. Legal, 10,000. Uh, the rest of it pretty much tracks to prior years. So, I'm, so on the legal side, to what Angela was saying, it's a significant amount of money. And you had said it's all personnel. Are they, are they no, they, historically it was personnel. Oh, historically. In the future, we expect they're... I can't, I can't really explain But what for it this is. budget here, we don't expect it to be personnel. For the 2020 budget. It could be. It could be, but that's not... It's just So you're just setting it aside. Well, not really. We're anticipating one legal problem that will probably carry into the next year. Okay. <laughs> It could be significant. It might just turn out to be a nothing. Okay. <coughs> but better you be prepared than shocked. Mm -hmm. It's like, why are we putting 15000 aside for the personal media? It may last another five years. But we're going to put it in there. Because the last thing we want is to be able to shut down the well because we can't process personal. 
I have a question about on this page, on the water page. Maintenance and repairs doesn't have anything. Uh, you've got maintenance and repairs in a couple of different ways in here. Okay, so it's yeah. about uh, two thirds of the way down under lab supply and equipment, lab services. So this year, year to date spent to eight thousand one seventy four, but nothing's budgeted for next year. Is that is that correct? Lab supplies and equipment. Um they spent 3564 no, no, no. for 12 Maintenance months. and repairs. I'm sorry, it's under oh, lab supply. And we have to do some cleaning up of this form because maintenance and repairs appear several times. That's what I thought. So where and so it's up at the top. If it's up at the top, we don't rebudget it down below. Whatever. But I guess what I'm asking is, is there an adequate amount budgeted for maintenance and repairs? It came in the last couple of years. Um, it so far this year, eight thousand. Last year, just under twenty thousand. But I don't see that amount dedicated to maintenance and repair repairs in the water budget. I just don't see it anywhere. Well, they planned on or proposed thirty thousand last year. Yeah, I see. They've that. spent so far through eleven twenty one eight thousand one seventy four. But then. If you go up above, you've got maintenance or repairs treatment, 5,000, and arsenic treatment, 15,000. So that's 20,000. Oh, that's 5,000. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Formatting then, problem. The lines are not quite lighting up. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It looks like, okay, arsenic treatment like is. Hmm? <laughs> oh, nice. Arsenic, arsenic is a dollar. Yeah. Arsenic treatment is 15,000. Yeah, it's $1. And then maintenance, it's repairs, oh. distribution. $1. Five thousand, right? And then maintenance, repairs, treatment, two thousand. So seven thousand. I see. You've budgeted seven thousand. Right. Arsenic is a dollar. It's not. Uh, well, it is a dollar. It looks like that. No, it is a dollar. Right. That's like that line is a dollar. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be fifteen. Maintenance and repairs, distribution is fifteen. No, maintenance and repairs, distribution. There are definitional problems, and we've inherited them. And that is, for example, maintenance and repairs is supposed to be repairs and maintenance of existing equipment or processes. Nothing gets replaced. You just upgrade it. Capital improvement means you take something out and you put something new in its place, like a valve. And it's always been a problem trying to get the definitional thing clarified. You know, if you have a valve and you reseat it and you put new seals in, that's maintenance and repair. If you take the valve out and you replace it, that's a capital improvement. And we've had a problem over time trying to get people to understand the difference between those things. In your accounting system? No, in accounters. The, the accountants are not getting it. Like. I, I, so, I, her, I, as a commissioner, one. though, isn't it your oversight that's supposed to get all of this straightened out? Mm -hmm. Wasn't this your opportunity to present the budget the way you'd like to see it, according to the definitions that you'd like? Or at least give us notes so that, again, so we can tie I'm things in. Things are, you know, things are not, they don't line up, and so it's hard the to figure out. The lines are not lining up. Yes. The lines are not lining up. Well, the lines are fine. If, if the numbers are wrong, then that's not because the lines aren't lining up. Under arsenic treatment, it's one dollar. Yes, I see that. Okay, but I think it's supposed to be the fifteen thousand that's above that. Right, it's just the well, that's them not that's putting it in the right columns. But if he's saying that arsenic treatment is fifteen, he's got a dollar in there. Right. Right. What is it supposed to be? Arsenic tre treatment. Hold on a minute. Well, I. Think it's the. That's a dollar. I'm sorry. Yes, Thank you're you. correct. Okay. I stand correct. That was a place. But maintenance and repairs distribution. I think this was when he said you better plan Keep for a open. major break. Correct. A major break. So that's the 15. So it's in the right spots and in the right that's definitions. Correct. It was just mis so can I, them. Can I ask a question? But if you did, we haven't had many breaks, so if we have to replace the arsenic, we're going to move it. What was yeah. the total maintenance and repair budget last year authorized? And what is it that you're proposing this year? across whatever the lines are. I can't, honestly, I can't figure it out. Well, the maintenance and repairs authorized 
last year was 30,000. All right. Okay. Yeah. And through December, uh, November 21st, they spent 8,174. We agree on that. What about the maintenance and repairs at the top? Let's finish this one. There's a 17,000, the second, well, I can't really tell if it's the second one or the first, first line. First line down, maintenance and repairs okay. distribution is 15,000. Yeah, got it. Sorry. Sorry. It's very good. But this shows no, yeah. no spending or anything on it. Last year they proposed 30,000. What, spent where, so is that, where is that 30,000? I think it's the one middle. Do you see one. lab supplies and equipment? Oh, lab down service, at the bottom. Lab service, lab chairs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thirty thousand, and then they've spent through November twenty-first eight one seven four. We agree. You found that number. Uh huh. Okay, but because there's a duplication in end tabs, we went up and put those the, the proposed numbers up above in maintenance, repairs, treatment, and maintenance, repairs, distribution. So maintenance, repairs, treatment is five thousand. And maintenance repairs distribution is fifteen thousand. That's twenty. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you're going down ten thousand dollars. Yes. And the five. The reason it's difficult is the five thousand isn't formatted the way the others are. So right. yeah. it looks well, like it could be fifty bucks. Yeah. I mean, they they budgeted thirty and they spent mm -hmm. a little over eight. So you're budgeting 20. fifteen plus five. You're budgeting twenty. Right. Mm -hmm. and, but there's a reason for that. And it comes down to the Warren articles, which is down below. By the way, when you say they, who do, who do you mean? Aren't you the water, aren't you the commissioners, and should it be you, us, we? I'm just curious. I, I'm using the anthropomorphic they. You know, they say, you, know, you are the commissioners, are you not? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, thank you. For simplicity, though, can't you combine them so you don't have to look in two different places? Eventually, even eventually do that. So well, it's really hard to follow this way. We have to assume we get it back from the accountant as well. By the, the way, accountant, the accountants have done these. In fact, the same accounting firm I think has done it for years, which is why we follow this. Well, it, 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 also, it also goes back historically. This format that you're seeing here, mm -hmm. this format goes back decades. And so if we start apples to apples. pushing them around, it won't look the same. It doesn't look the same as it did years mm -hmm. ago. Trust me, I've been on the budget committee for 40 years. It doesn't look the way does. it has before. Well, they, I mean, they did. It's more do, confusing than yeah, ever. There are clear way. ways to change. There, as I said, there are definitional problems, and then getting people to understand the difference between maintenance and capital improvement, and what goes in what slot and what goes in the other, has been an ongoing problem. When I was a commissioner 20 years ago, that was the problem. They figured if they redid an entire stretch of pipeline, that was maintenance. It's like, no, that's capital improvement. I agree. You're right. So are we are we but good on the maintenance of uh, the uh, maintenance and repairs? We can understand that. Or more questions on maintenance and repairs? I have some other questions, but I just want to make sure we are all clear on. on that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just didn't want to jump ahead. But when I look at the prop share admin, and I see it on both. Sides. The yes. number that's proposed. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, if I'm looking at at water, you're proposing 27.5, and last year it was proposed to be 41. Yes. And then the year before that, it was 30. You expended 33. And uh, and similarly, when you look at the prop share for sewer, the number is quite a bit lower. Um, what's so? So there's a drop, pretty significant drop. What's 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 in that? Why is that drop so much, or why was it so much higher? We felt that there was a good deal of unnecessary expensing in that area. So it's not a change in the service or anything like that. Why? 
one of them was they were going to add a room to the building. And we said, no. Like an office or something. Yeah. A, a break room. room. Break. <laughs> a break room. And we said, nah. We can live without it. There are other things that are more important. Okay. Other questions? Oh, yeah, yeah. Question about the contingency. I always see it on on SOAR, which is the title at the top, sorry. Um, why is that why is there only contingency on that? Not on water. Or am I missing it? Contingency. It's near the it's near right the above the crop share. Yeah. We're yeah. talking yeah. about in wastewater. Yes. But there isn't one in regular water, so it's the same. Yeah, there's no they, they had never put one in water, the water side, so it basically becomes a miscellaneous category. Well, you've never had one in wastewater either, right? Yes, we did. I'm right about crop share administrative contingency, $4,000. But no expenses. Is, oh, is that a two-line title? Is, uh, is that, no. Are you saying contingency and crop share administrative are no, the same line? No, above. One line out. Only this but year. Only shows only proposed. Proposed. There's no expenses or anything. Um, it, it's, it's only proposed. proposed. I thought Vern yes. just said so, it, they've had the contingency all along. Well, they've had the, they've had the, the, the title and the line, but nothing's been in it until this year. Okay. And it is a bummer. It's a miscellaneous. And you're only doing because it. Because I hate the word miscellaneous word. That's sure, it's uh, understood. But that it's only in uh, the waste water? It's o it only appears because there is no category in water that says contingency. You, I you believe could, you one could, could add one. <laughs> it's like, it's one they could they, add they one. have miscellaneous expense. That's what they have. Who's no, they? Once again, I guess I don't understand. Um, we're talking about historical people who came here before right, me. Right, but this is your... This is your budget, right? And this in is my not budget, a historical in budget. My budget. Contingency in wastewater is the same as miscellaneous in water. Ah, thank you. Okay. There is a miscellaneous in water? I have mm -hmm. spoken. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. I've been Is there a, 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 um, it's a dollar? It's a dollar. Right. Is there a formula that you use to develop the $4,000? No. It just, when you get to the bottom line, you want to make sure that you're staying within that same. Um, range of dollars. That's all. But you're not. In prior years, only a hundred dollars was spent in this and either. Well, no, it just uh, depends on what you're comparing it to. It's the yeah, authorized yeah. budget versus what. I have a question. Is there a reason that? In the water budget, engineering is a separate thing from the other, and then in the uh, wastewater page, it's included in other. It just seems inconsistent. That's I, and I, I don't understand it. just how it's been done. Notes. Well, other other also includes anything with like. <clears throat> any studies that are going to have to be done. We're looking at the PFAS, PFAO stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're anticipating that comment, mm -hmm. even though the judge has said, no, you don't have to enforce it. Yeah. We're anticipating it coming. So so that explains the other in water, yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So that is separate from the engineering yes. in water. But my point is that other and engineering are lumped together on the sewer sheet. Yes. 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 It's okay. a sewer. You could change the title of the sheet, and then we'd all get it right. Yeah. It would be nice to rebuild the whole thing. Well, you can change it. Be my guest. Teach, <laughs> teach people how to tell the difference between maintenance and capital improvement. Yeah. But that would be great. That's a bigger task than I have time for. Your county people should know the difference. No, our counter is an auditor. That's it. 
if he's an auditor. Oh, I'm, I'm doing that. Was time. should know the difference, and it shouldn't be a, a point of confusion. Maybe for the layman, but not for the auditor or the accountant. No, the auditor understands it perfectly. That's not the problem. Uh, Angel. Um, so I'm still on the water budget. I didn't notice it may be on the super budget too, but I'm noticing it now. Other professional services has zero budgeted for it. Uh, are those now in different lines? Is that like Wright Pierce is now broken out? Right. It, the, what's below it is the detail. So there's nothing budgeted this year. For Other professional services ought to be like a header as opposed to a line item. See. So the porta potty is a professional service. <laughs> As it happens, that's where, that's, that's where the where we put it. As opposed to the contract. As a professional, I'm taking a little bit of exception to that. Settle engineering. <laughs> I didn't understand why we even needed it, but. Mm -hmm. Kind of just a high level question. So the approved budget was eighty thousand less than what you have for the authorized, the authorized budget, right? Total so budget. the total. So you said that we're this year you're planning on coming within that lower. Yes. So is there something that hasn't happened this year that you haven't been able to do because of the less money? Like no. so next year you just need all this money again, or you can't make that happen again, or it's, I mean, that's a huge increase if you've been able to function fine on the lower dollar amount. Of course. Fine. You see, we have to develop this budget in consultation with the superintendent. And many of these are his recommendations. And we said, okay, we'll go along with that, and we'll present the budget. That's okay. So in your recommendation, would there be line items that you don't think need to be as large as they are? Oh yeah. If, if it were solely up to me, solely up to me, the budget would be much smaller. But I can't do it solely on my part. I have to do it in consultation with other commissioners and the superintendent. If I understand correctly, when we get a budget from the town, there are departments who will submit their proposed budget, and the, and the select board will decide yes or no, or they'll lower it, or they'll they'll come up with it, what their budget is. Yes. Um, what you're saying is you've got a budget that maybe you personally, or or the board, or the or the commissioners. No, just me personally. Okay. So the commissioners, this is the. This is the budget that the commissioners have agreed to put forward. That's okay. Yes. That was important. Thanks. Can we get into the Warren articles now? Sure. Some of these items you may see have been reduced. Uh, for example, the maintenance and repairs that was budgeted for thirty thousand, we spent eight thousand. Well, that was because there were a lot of things that were proposed last year that were going to be done out of the operating budget. And we decided that it would be better to put them in as warrant articles and bond them, or actually issue debt. And down below are the items that we are going to put in as a warrant article. Now, we're going to do a combined one. Willie Street, Porter Wells, General John Sullivan, which was a worn article last year, those two, 30,000, 17,000, but we didn't get to it this year. You know, we're also going to insist that engineering be done on all of these items. In some cases, they're required to be, like Willie Street. So we're going to put the engineering cost in as part of the borrowing. The total loan will be 200000 for $200,400. Assuming a five-year borrowing at 3.125%, the annual cost would be 43362 It's five years. Five years. 
because if we go to Rita or we go to Bond Bank, it's going to be 30 years. No, no, no discussion. Because it's a major, it's water line replacement part of it. You said that the thirty thousand and the seventeen thousand went Porter Well and General John was done last year. They were warrant articles that were authorized to do, but you hadn't done the job. I haven't done. It. Okay, so why do you have to ask them for them again? Can't you defer it for a year? The, the money warrant that articles are only good for the year in which it's authorized. There's no such thing as a warrant article that's forever, except for borrowings. They all no, it's it's authorization to spend when you get an approved warrant article. So if you, like for instance, if, and Caroline can correct me if I'm wrong, but because we didn't, we got authorized to do the boiler here and decided to wait a year because we thought we had more time for it. And we're deferring that money in case something goes wrong for next year. But it's in the SIP. The boiler's in the SIP. Is that different? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that different, no. Caroline? I, I don't believe that that is why the authorization persists. I think that the we I think you can do that with any warrant article. There may be something different about village districts, but I don't think that it's that it's part of the CIP that we are allowed to defer the year. It's just one year, right? Just right. one year. Start that's up. right. But one year. I'm just saying, I just don't know if you have authorization to spend why you'd have to ask authorization again. That just confuses me. Well, for one thing, we're not bringing it out of current income. We're bringing in the wall. Yeah. So. My other concern is that you're lumping these all together. Yes. Because the most important one is Willie Street. Yes. And what if it fails? What, what fails? The Warren Arc. The well, Warren Arc. Okay, we could do it as a standalone, and it could still fail. Well, that's true. But when you're talking about 200 versus 120, you know, I just I just think when you're lumping <coughs> the, the, those all of those together. <coughs> It, it is a bigger dollar amount, which potentially could fail, where we know we have to do Willie Street next year. Okay. So why wouldn't you do it separate? Well, for one thing, if you do a warrant article for this year and you don't borrow, you have to pay for it this year. In one year, right? Mm -hmm. Authorizations last at the end of the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. If you do it as a loan, over five years, you capitalize it. And if, why are you making it a loan? That's what I'm also confused by. Why, why aren't you paying it up front? It increases the cost of the project by you taking a loan. Not much. It's like eleven thousand dollars over a five-year period, mm -hmm. which is actually pretty cheap when you think of the present value of the dollar. So that's why you're doing it? Well, if you put the $40,000, those two, $47,000 mm -hmm. in two projects in the current year, that raises the current year's rate. Mm -hmm. So if you think um, raising rates 60% is painful now at another what, $47,000 for that? With bonding it, you have to have a certain, you have to have a certain percentage, is that correct? You have pass, to yes, pass. Thirds. So it's risky, I yes. guess. Yes, it is. That, that you wouldn't get Willie Street. I'm just saying. I, I personally think this would be easier for people to accept, because Willie Street is obvious. Mm -hmm. But not to everybody. Right. Well, right. <laughs> it is to us because we've been on top of the project due to your reports. But to the rest of the township, people who are not involved in the district, well, it's only like two hundred thousand dollars. It's only the district. It's only the district that votes for this. Not the whole town. Just anybody who's used has the, the system. So when you add in the other two projects. If you're not on Willie Street, yeah. you're up for that. You're okay because it's a total package and that was the well, process behind it. But let, let's point out something. Uh, you know, you can recommend or not recommend that warrant article. Mm -hmm. 
But when it gets to the voters, they can say, uh, now we're going to strip out everything but Willie Street. We'll pass that. How can they do that? They just vote to reduce it. They can say, we'll, we'll do 120000 for Willie Street, and that's all we can do. We won't do the other two projects. So, yeah. Yeah, just, at the presentation, somebody would have to propose them. Yeah, have to vote. Yes. Right. Yeah. It took 80000 out last year. Suzanne? I was just going to say that in truth, I mean, the Budget Committee can provide an opinion on this, but really the commissioners, hmm. it is up to the commissioners to propose the Warren Articles as they see right. fit in the way that they see fit. Right. And, uh, and I agree. So, and so, but again, you know, we could make some, we could provide some opinions if we think we have some particular wisdom. I mean, I don't, but I'm just saying, it's, it's really your, it's your call. But the it's voters have the final say. Right, but commissioners can do their homework in trying to lay out all of the uh, relevant data so right. that a voter can better make it, uh, an informed decision. As, as I'm sure you know from experience, sometimes something comes out of a deep left field that does something you never expected. That's true. Right? And so that can happen. Angela? So, um... The cost difference on the Willie Street project is about 14000 from the letter that you submitted with the original budget. Is that an increase in cost? Uh, no. This was a concern expressed that, especially for Clem, that I know you've budgeted this as carefully as you could, but based on experience, we're bound to run into something. That's going to force it up. So the fourteen thousand is more like a contingency that kind of added in. I thought it was a solid number, but Glenn didn't. Okay, as Suzanne said. And I doubt it. His experience. Suzanne? Bear in mind that if it's a loan, a simple interest loan, and we don't need it, we don't have to take the money. Just the same question I had about the rates. So. The, what is the current water rate that's resulted from? For 15,000 gallons, if you don't exceed that, it's $93 that's, per quarter. That's not what I see here, right? So that's, no, that's what not, you see here is $148 per that's quarter. That's the proposed. $148. So they're going to an increase. Oh, okay. So the nine. I'm sorry. So the 148 is the FY20 <coughs> proposed. Right now it is 93. Thank you. Now, actually, I did a quick and dirty on what would happen if this budget had passed as proposed. Based on the 93 dollars and the 145, they would have never made it to the end of the year. They would have had to do another rate increase. We would have. We would have had to do another rate increase. I would have had to do another. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on that, if you don't mind, the uh, last year when we were deliberating the budget, I understood there was going to be a fairly significant rate increase. Was there a significant rate increase? Only one. Oh, so it was less then, but now if we get to the next year, they need to go up. Is that well, happening? Well, or is actually, compound, is it? if we hadn't made some you know, put the brakes on and really control costs, there would have been more increases in 2019. In fact, I do believe one quote was that it would be $25 a quarter. A, a month, it'll go up. Ouch. Yeah. A month. Yep. You, you may have already said this, so apologies <coughs> for my not remembering. The proposed rate was that based on the Warren article passing? Or? Yes. Okay, thank you. The, the total budget for water is 413807 yep. 870 In other words, the cost of the Warren articles, the capital improvement plus the annual cost of the borrowing would bring it to 413870 Divide that into the number of units, 698 comes to 148 <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Which is a significant increase. But I think the voters need to know, you know, you want a budget like this? Okay, that's what it's going to cost. 
I mean, one way to, to convince people that it's needed is comparison to other towns around. I, coming from where I came from, these are very nice. Even the higher rate is a very nice rate. What town did you come from? It's from in New Jersey. Oh, wow. I mean, well, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying. But we the up being no brothers. I think even as even a region around here, uh, are, it's, are, how, how do we compare? We are actually, with these rates, we'll be quite high compared to, compared to, to towns of similar size. Per gallon. I, I know the North Carolina study says we're way under the rates, but that's, you know, we've been looking at other towns. Epping, I think Epping was one of them. You know, only Epping is higher. But are they going to face other problems that we're dealing with now, potentially? Have they kicked the can down the road? Some yeah, they, of their no, stuff, they're, they're paying more than we are. Nobody's saying that, they, that they're going to change that. They've had tremendous growth in that town. Yes. That I used to work there. It's, it was a town that didn't have anything, and all of a sudden, yeah. once Walmart went in, it exploded. You know, and they've had housing growth. They've had everything. So maybe we're intersection between 125 and 101, and it's becoming a bedroom community in Manchester. The other, God, yeah, the other thing that they've done too, they do the same thing we do, where they don't charge based upon your usage, they charge it based upon a flat fee plus. And it's the only place around here and Epping are the only ones around that do that. So, you know. No incentive. There's no incentive, plus you're not being charged for what you use. I mean, you had the breakdown on some of these. I mean, these people are paying for a single family house. What was it, 76% of the 76% of the people who are uh, billed for water use less than 15,000, which means they're subsidizing people who use 15,000 and more. I'm in that 15,000 under the I never get to 15,000. But you're paying. Thirty thousand. Who's the who's the who's the? She's got a duplex. You got a duplex, right? Yes, but both use that. We never yep. use. We never consume the water. That so why don't you change it to be more fair? What? What? Why don't you change the the way you charge people to being more fair and putting it where it belongs? Based on actual usage. Actual usage. Yeah, Interesting point. Yes. <laughs> um, we got some blowback from some people about, well, no, you should keep it the way it is. Those the ones that are underpaying, right? Uh, Not actually, necessarily. The, <laughs> Not necessarily. One particular instance, I looked up that person's water usage, and they use a lot of water. So they're so they're getting they're getting a deal. Right. Um, the advantage, I, you know, we're we're going to have institute programs like. People who water their lawns and their gardens and fill their swimming pools. If, it, if you're in the sewer district, you've got to have it on a sewer meter. And they're like $105 for you just screw them on your stay on your outside and water your lawn. That way you take the total off your regular meter, subtract what comes off the auxiliary meter, and that's your sewer charge. Right, right, right now, there's no. Right now, the proposal is to stay at the fifteen thousand current plus. This is based on the fifteen thousand. Any other questions on uh, wastewater <coughs> and uh, a couple on Willie yeah. Street? Uh, how soon do you expect Willie Street to be done? Only reason is for Emily for the school because they're planning on putting it on next year's budget. Now, no, their 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 entrance. If I I heard the forty thousand too, yeah. and I said, huh? Um, if the school, we're we're going to try to get the people from Ted Berry down here in February to talk about the process and how they do it. The school would be smart to talk to Ted Berry about having them put the line in using their cutter thing, it'll cost considerably less than $40,000 if they do it all at the same time. Are you talking about like a trenchless pipe? Yeah, the trenchless. Significantly cheaper. Significantly cheaper. With a new meter, I'm thinking around 10000 
back to Charlie's we question. We do like looking for bargains. What? Back to Charlie's question. Our fiscal year ends July 1. Yeah. So, or ends June 30th, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, if it happens prior to that, then it would have to be in the current budget, not in the proposed right. budget, was Charlie's point. Right. Okay. But, on a $5 million budget, I think you can find 10000 We'll see. Well, I'm sure you can. What you need is one of these. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, I'm, believe I'm, me, we've used that plenty. Yeah, well. Any other questions I, from the district? You sure? Anybody got any questions, email me. I will be glad to try to answer them. And I will modify this and send out the modified version. If there are questions, though, shouldn't they should be? We should talk about that process. So right. We have to be careful about this, right? Yeah. What process? We if if we have questions, they should come from the the, the committee. The, uh, well, they committee. should be sent to John, and then John needs to send them out. Actually, I believe that's the procedure. Well, but no decisions can be made. I could ask something really frivolous. I could ask something really frivolous. We have to agree right? so, as a committee. Yeah. On what the question is that we're going to ask you to research. If one person has a question, <laughs> but uh, Suzanne, an example, it's a frivolous question that's going to cause you a bunch of work that you don't need to do, and we as a group don't feel it needs to be answered, then you don't need to answer it. If we as a group make a motion to say we want this, this answered, then. This was dealt with previously when. Kim St. Hilaire was chair. She said, all we want is the list of questions. You're not going to get answers. We just want to know, is there a common theme of issues that people want addressed? So yeah, we can do that among us. Among so just right. instead of each of us sending you emails with questions, no, let's, as a group, deliberate, discuss, and, and then send you the questions. Right. That's a budget committee decision. So, one more question. Is it possible for you to um, it gets kind of confusing to try to read this with all the ways in which you box things in. Can you simplify the formatting a little bit so that the lines are numbered, the line items are numbered, and maybe more of a grid, more of a grid format? It would yeah. make it easier to I'll read. I'll do the grid. Thank you. I'll do the grid. Thanks. All right. So, okay. okay. I'm done. Goodbye. Bye. Get back. <laughs> yes, she'll finally get it. Well, it's going to get superseded. <laughs> so the next, yes, the next uh, item on the agenda Thank you for is to start deliberating over the town budget. I and um, <laughs> what I propose is that we follow the order of town budget as presented in, in, uh, in the spreadsheet that Denise has, as opposed to going in order which they were presented, just because we <laughs> mixed and matched the presentations um, chronologically to fit. But, but I think it's easier if we just start from the top and uh, work our way down. So in this, um, in the budgets that we're passing out now, all of the um, Expenses for 19 has been updated in here, so that will give you a better idea of what we are so far in expenditures. Hearing what has been proposed by the board <coughs> and the 
school and, and the sewer and sure. water, and let hear comments from them to know what um, what they are for and against. That's and my opinion, but that's how I've always operated on when I was. And then afterwards, we would go through. Then you would deliver. Take, it. take those. Yes. So, so we're really in the fact finding point here. We're just asking questions to resolve any remaining questions from the presentations that were given, essentially. That's kind of, and which you get a, you get a big vote to bring forward that you will bring this to the public hearing or the delivery session. I guess it is called now. But Suzanne might be disagreeing. Suzanne, I'm making full opportunity to send it. That's okay. <laughs> So my understanding, it was not my understanding from the very, very beginning, but as I've learned through various municipal association budget workshops, is that the budget that's presented at the public hearing is the budget committee's proposed budget and not the select board. And so now they should see both. If there's a distinction, then they should see where the budget committee feels the budget should be and where the select board feels the budget should be. And that's that's my understanding. So we should how we get there. I don't, I'm not. I don't know. What do you do? I, I'm not a fan of section by section, but that's just me. I'm kind of like a big picture sort of thing. But in any event, I think that what we should be presenting to at the public hearing is something that we call the budget committee's proposed budget. And yes, it can have a column that says, and this is what the select board proposed. If it's different, and it may not be different. We're going to have a column that says budget committee proposed because the this. Column O is the select board's proposal, so we should be adding a column that says budget committee proposal. Yes. And again, if we're different. If, if, we're, different. if we're different. Well, you should have it there just to make sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Probably even have it. Is it usually, does it usually have a budget committee column? I believe last year it was just changed to reflect the new proposed budget, which at that time was the budget committee proposed budget. The lines that were different were highlighted with a note to um, say what the select board amount was, oh, okay. where it did. Previously, it, it, it's had two columns, but mm -hmm. whatever you want to do. I mean, as long as it's indicated if something has been changed based on what the select board or other departments have proposed and the committee changes it, it needs to have a note that says what was changed and why. Right. So, so just getting the process straight, mm -hmm. we're, we'll We'll, we'll discuss and, and clarify tonight. Um, we'll have the public hearing. We have another session, actually, where we look at the school budget, and we have another chance to take a, take a swing at things mm -hmm. if we are still have questions. Uh, and then we go to the public hearing. And, uh, and then after that, we deliberate in a meeting and make, it, make decisions, or do we go to the public hearing with Change, if we have thoughts about changing, we go to the public hearing with our thoughts about what should change. Seems like that's what. Seems like we should be clarifying now and in the, this session and in the next session any changes that we suggest to this proposed budget. That's. Am I am I getting a, it's, no? I, it, that's again, right. it's our it's our it's budget. The budget committee's right. proposed budget. We. We go about the public hearing on the budget, and then we sit afterwards, and based on what we've heard, we, we may make some further changes. But it is the budget that this budget committee is proposing, is the one that's proposed at, at the public hearing. Right. Now, as people have said, it could be the very same budget that the mm -hmm. select board has proposed. So my question is, do we want to go through this tonight and, and talk about changes, or do we want to talk about just questions and then end up next deliberative session that we have when we'll have the school board budget as well. Then go through and if, if there if somebody wants to make a proposed change we can make motions and I mean you're still early. You certainly can go through, I would think, because there may be sections that have no changes, recommended changes, and then that's off your plate to <laughs> you get to the public hearing. So I would suggest you can do some of that stuff. As we go. As we go. Right. I'm I'm wondering, just my suggestion because I'm a sort of a bigger not bigger, I'm a big picture kind of person, as well as a detail-oriented person. And that is, if we had a discussion about things that we thought were problematic, just in general, then we could use that to sort of guide whatever changes we do make, if we decide to make any changes at all. I mean, maybe maybe the consensus is that we're perfectly happy with this. It's a 2% overall increase. Maybe, maybe we're done. 
would it be helpful to just have some kind of overall thoughts about what we about the, about the bottom line, about any any inconsistencies, not inconsistencies, any things that we find problematic in the detail. It's 18.1 What's 18 .1? It's less than two? 18.1. Well, we, we have a reserve fund for I mean, the capital items weren't. Oh, I see. Oh, you're talking about the operating budget. I'm talking the bottom line was at 2% at one time. Now it's 18.1. Okay, so overall it's it's eighteen point one. Yeah, right. Okay. That doesn't include offsetting revenue, so it's a little bit but yes, as far as expenses expenses go. Yeah. So the operating budget is increasing still two percent but with the capital projects. Yeah, because we did capital last month. To to the point about having a discussion about general approaches. I guess, you know, as I've thought about this process <laughs> I know there's always been the proposed budget, and then there's always been the actuals. <coughs> and I've always thought, well, shouldn't we really just start with the 2020 budget being the actuals from 2019, and then go up from there? Because otherwise, I mean, otherwise, every, you know, we're, we're taking the proposed for 2019 and adding 2% of it, when in fact, I think if you look at the actuals for 2019, it's it's lower than the proposed 2019. So would would the 2019 actual numbers be the best starting point for the 2020 budget? Do we have the total actuals for 2019? Yeah. I mean, I, we're not closed for the. No, we we wouldn't have a, a whole picture because you go know, right. I mean, your expenses go into year to date, January. Though. I, I would think year to date you would have just like we just did with our yeah. budget to say we've spent this much, we propose we're going to spend this much more. I, I don't. It's, that, it's, that was my question. I don't see where I'm comparing apples to apples. And, and, here's, and here's my and example. I, agree. I mean, so we don't have the 2019, but if I go back to the 2018 expenditures, the actual expenditures, so that's mm -hmm. column J, mm -hmm. that's two million ten thousand. If we look at the proposed budget for 2020, we're having a proposed budget of $2.4 million. Mm -hmm. just, just on the operating budget, leaving the, the capital stuff out. And now, so if we look at the actuals for 2019, we're at $1.9 million. I'm assuming that's through the end. So we only have one more month to go. Right. So even if you just round it up to, say, make it $2.1 million, Add another 200,000 out of that. That's still the actual for 2019 is going to be 2.1 million. And shouldn't that be the starting point for the proposed? Because year to year, the expenditures on the operating budget aren't going to change that much unless you know, salt gets more expensive, where you do a 2% raise for people or, or whatever. So it always seems like we're, we're starting with a number that is not realistic in my mind. It's already inflated. And then we're adding some more money onto an already inflated number. So when we're talking about, well, what's, what should be the budget committee's general approach, that was always one thing that I thought would be a good starting point, to say, let's start with actuals. And then that should be our proposal. as a budget committee, not as a select board. I know what the select board did as part of the proposal. So. You know, a process, you know, just as a, you know, it's almost, it's not really zero-based budgeting, it's kind of like, well, because I think that can get a little bit too complicated, but, you know, things are pretty static in the town with the exception of unknowns that come in and typical cost of living increases that go on for, you know, the products that you can buy, heat and light and all the other stuff. The only exception is that we have had some big fluctuations in our roadway surfacing in the mm -hmm. past few years that, that we move, move that from capital to operating. That's right. right. Um, but that we can always take that step back, step that out of it. Uh, well, but it is already, right? Because, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, it's not. It, it, it's it in operating now. Yeah. Yeah. But the difference, 
Well, for one particular one is elections and registrations. Mm -hmm. This year was only one election. Next year, there's four. Right. That's going to be a big jump right. for one year. Right. You and know, so yes. you have to be careful on certain areas. Yeah. Well, I, have, I that, absolutely yeah. agree. I mean, yeah. there's going to be something that's materially going to change from an actual number of last year for you know, take salt all of a sudden quadruple. You can't do anything mm -hmm. about it. But your baseline for salt is not your 2019 expenditure, it's your 2019 expenditure based on what you think that, you know, the tripling of price of salt. And, that be, and that's a valid number to, to give, you know, to give to people. So, like I said, I think, you know, the point of, you know, the general approach do we want to take as a budget committee? Um, do we want to start with the 2019 actuals and see what it should be and then compare that to the select board? Or should we take it as a, um, just again, just, just to go with, you know, I'm oh, sorry, just, that, that's my point. Historically, um, when we get to the end of the year, I know we usually have, um, you know, if we have, if we have left over, we put some into various funds. But, but to Joe's point, if we're inflated, then each year we should be having a surplus of, uh, or, Yes, a surplus of budget. What does that actually happen, or do we spend exactly what we? Well, it goes to the fund balance. It goes to the, goes fund, to the fund balance, which is, ending, is the ending fund. amount goes to the fund balance. And, and what's the fund? It's the fund balance. It keeps going up. Keep going up. Or the select would have the right to right. take the fund balance to offset the tax rate That's right. if they choose to. Yeah. So it helps in that area too. So, and so fund balance is a good thing. Because it gives you an opportunity with surprises yes. that happen that will help you to lower a, a tax rate um, that was inflated year. by a yeah. certain item or a disaster. It could be right. anything. I mean, but it wouldn't be like your regular routine expenses. It's something that wasn't planned right. or had to be spent. But I thought even our fund balance was, you know, based on that that training course we took was already, you know, they have a recommendation, mm -hmm. and I thought we were significantly above that recommendation. No, we're not. No? Do you know what it is? We're about, I think, eight and a half or nine percent. Um, DRA recommends between five and seventeen percent. Um, it's also, Dover, by the way, has like 19 or 20 percent, and they're still growing it mm -hmm. because the, it's, it's, a, it's a catastrophe safeguard, mm -hmm. such as a few years ago when Partridge Lane culvert collapsed. Um, it's, um, it protects from the need to go into debt as well as potentially offsetting the tax rate. So it's one of, it, it's a financial policy that we need to be looking into. You know, what is, what does, what does the board consider, what does the select board consider a healthy fund balance, not by dollar amount, but concept. Right, but then shouldn't we say, okay, if we want to get to a 10% fund balance uh, amount, that if we should get to that number by having a specific line item in the budget, not by over budgeting something, not by not by using a budget number and increasing it by something that was already above the actuals for the prior year. I think it's just a little bit more upfront in the sense of you know it would make more that sense to me. I, mean, I, I, I guess I have to say I don't believe that that's how the slow board does their budget. They do the budget based on need, not by over budgeting something to have a little bit left in the fund balance. I think we do and we do a lot of looking at things mm -hmm. based on what happened this year. You know, like it's a bottom up budget. It's, a it's it's based on the need and some things go down, some things go up, but it, it, it's not to put money into a fund balance. And no, I, I, I didn't mean to I, I'm sorry if I came across that. No 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 but I, I, I would I would like it you know it just would be I mean, but you understand my point about the, the differences between the actuals for 2019 and what we're already proposing. That's, that's, the, you know, that, that's much more of an increase than 2%, whatever that is. Well, so I wasn't thinking in that way, but it, it, would the committee like to use Joe's approach to go through at least the <laughs> section and see what we think about it? <coughs> I'll make a motion for that. I mean, in general, that's what I'm looking for as I went through this to say, uh, what were our expenditures for 2019? And are we in the ballpark for that proposed change? Um, 
I, like I said, I'm not looking to change stuff that's always been done this way. I'm just saying that, you know, as I've thought about the role and as I understood the budget committee, that would, you know, that's been my approach, you know, from my professional side, you know, as I had to deal with people up top and then say, you can't just add that on. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm totally on board with Joe's proposal there. I started with zero base budgeting. And I've never seen anything remotely like that in this town in all the time I've lived here. And I think that's a good idea. And I, I would like to propose a motion that we look at it, as you mentioned, if anybody wants to second that. So we actually take a look at the line and compare what we actually want versus how it goes. Yeah, any, any discussion? I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's up to us to, to just kind of go through this the way we think it's efficient to do it. And uh, I'm, I think it's helpful. general consensus. Just, I think yeah. it makes sense. Everybody seems to be on board. Just try a section yeah, and see I what we try think. Try a section. May I offer a comment as you embark on this process that while you're looking at expenses through November 30th, very often for monthly expenses, it's really only items um, encumbered through October. So in a lot of cases, you're going to have two more months worth of billing in some places. Yeah, I mean, it can almost be something that if the percentage of the proposed 2020 is some percent, let's say, 8% higher than the actual for that for 2019 taking into account some adjustment. Is it more, I mean, I don't think we want to get into you know, this, this guy's a little bit more than that. I don't, I don't think that's necessary mm -hmm. to get that detail. But I mean, and maybe it is just looking at some of the real, you know, instead of going detail line by line, you know, go for the low hanging fruit of some really big items that had a significant jump. And, you know, so instead of completely changing the process, just use that as a, as, as something, as a criteria, as we look at the individual things, to say, is there anything that's really out of bounds versus the actual? And, and then maybe the select board has a reason for why that had to really jump up from the actual 2019 to a much larger proposed 2020 budget. So that's why we can check that one out. That makes sense to me. Uh, so maybe not changing everything around, just saying, you know, we talked about what are some criteria to use. That's, you know, that, I, did, you know, I brought it up only because that was going to be the criteria that I was going to use personally as I went, I went through this, but let me see what other people think. Motion. So let's start with the executive office and yeah. look through that. Oh, are we going to look motion. at just each individual line item or the the total and discuss that and then maybe break it into line items because I can see, see this becoming real cumbersome if they're, if they're going every single line item. Yeah. Um, so is it kind of the totals? The totals and then if there's significant difference? That if yeah. something that well, budget items. Yeah. Something Just certain, out some of these really jump out as a big budget. I mean, you're looking at line six, admin support. That's a almost 8%, 7.875, you know, and then on the proposed change is 9.6%. You go down here to 26, that's up 15 or 7.5. That's a lot of jump in that. In the meantime, we had other people down here that were asking for 800 bucks and we're offering them 500 bucks. I mean, I, I've seen this since I've been here and I'm new to this way of doing the budgeting, but it needs to be some some quality, I guess, in my opinion. But balance. I think you're, yeah, I think you're comparing apples to oranges a little bit when you're talking about um, salaries. And, and so I, I understand I just, that. I just, but I also understand that we've got, what, four people now working uh, in the admin staff here. There's a guy, there's some Pardon? Chuck and Caroline. Chuck and Caroline. And then, so you got, we've gone from one person in the past few years to three. Um, so that, that begs the question, how did we survive all these years without 
by on, yeah, sure. on the backs of select board members who put yeah. in 40 hours That's a week. Correct. That's correct. I will vouch for that. Yeah. And I will vouch for that. I spent 20 to 30 hours a week as a select board member, and in some weeks more than that. Yeah. And so there aren't any select board members that are able to do that anymore, and that's just I'm the fact of life. Sorry, I'm close and working Sorry. full time. So yeah. And, and at the end of the day, when we have an election for a select board, and there's one person applying or, or running, that's right. and that's happened two years in a row now, um, that's telling you something. So, I, I, so it is a change. And I think we talked about it last year um, with the new position. Um, but I think it's a, that's the reason, is, is that people are not volunteering to spend as much time. Well, that's been traditional all the time that I've lived here in town. They've had nobody running a lot of times in somebody's office, and one person, and the incumbent just keeps running and running. And I'm talking back Ed Jansen days, etc. So, to move forward, I, I just fully support, I understand, and I fully support the changes in the administrative personnel line. Then at the bottom line of the executive office, it, uh, is this the way you were suggesting, Joe? We're at 7.9 percent increase. Um, we we think we know those increases. Well, those increases are coming. We know in the salary range, and we talked about that. We've had a, we've had a presentation on it. Um, the elections as well. And the elections, which yeah. well, that's, that's not part of the salary. Or, that's the next yeah, one. Yeah, that's the next that's one. <laughs> so, are there other things in the executive office besides the, the salaries that we've discussed, um, been presented on, that we want to clarify or we think are out of whack? Professional services, 24,000 line 16. Is that the elevator? Uh, excuse me, 18. Is that the elevator? It says professional services, I don't know. Engineering and legal. Engineering and legal. Okay. And your question, what what is that for? Engineering and legal. And the engineer for what? The new heat system or? There isn't anything specifically earmarked at this time beyond, um, it looks like the Foundry Street culvert that runs from behind the Legion to the river um, likely um, is going to need to be spec'd out. And then legal expenses for policy review and um, zoning non-compliance issues. Specifics on that? What exactly are they looking for for that kind of money? As I mean, you can't talk about your legal stuff, it's also our policy okay. not to discuss legal as well. Well, is it legal because of personnel or is it legal because of um, we have to pay bills or something? That's a different thing. We pay bills. We don't have a problem. We don't talk to legal about paying bills. But there are anything no that we just pay personnel issues. Not at this point, but we don't know what Maybe the future holds, just like Sue and Water does. Okay. In the engineering, do we have a have you actually looked at the culvert, or have we got Not somebody out to look at that? Not yet. Yeah. And that's the one where on Lily Street? It goes from behind the Legion on Locust Street and crosses Foundry and meets oh, yeah. the river. I know where it goes. But we're going to have to have someone look at that because we probably need to get a camera down there and to make sure that everything, see what the whole picture shows because it is coming up and it's flooding the Legion's. Um, in the winter time, it's a nice one down there parking lot. So I do have to fix it. Angela? I noticed that um, this actual, this line item is reduced from 2017. Which line item are you talking to? Professional services. Oh, okay. I didn't know we're still on there. Sorry. I'm sorry. I guess I'm still on there. <laughs> okay. But I'm noticing it's reduced from 31,500 in 2017. I'm also noticing that it has not been fully spent mm -hmm. in 2018. So it's really almost like a contingency. You don't know what to predict is going to happen in any given year with zoning or whatever you might need a legal opinion on. We are pursuing some issues with zoning and planning and non-conformances. Mm -hmm. And 
and then there's the engineering. And, well, yeah. engineering, but also people possibly will not follow our guidance and take us to court for legal services. Got it. Okay. Is something that we're trying to get the town back into compliance in certain areas. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Line six, I'm not uh, the bookkeepers. Could you explain that increase? I'm not for or against it. I just need information on what the increase is and how you came up with it. Got reduced. So what was the? The original line speak. It's okay, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So the original proposal was for five on. hours a week <laughs> and an increase of two and a half dollars. The select board settled on a. One dollar seventy cent per hour increase and two and a half hours per week. Okay, you can split it in half. You also try. I mean, the only reason why is because it's a lot more than the two percent. Well. You mean for him? That's correct. Yes. Because by when you're looking at the market, he he started at very low compared to what his uh, his duties and um, his experience is. So we we started at way lower than we should have, and we need more hours because there's a lot going on in the office. Oh, no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. So in the uh, in this line six admin personal report, that's. Caroline, Caroline and Chuck. Chuck. And, the uh, and, and So the we mm -hmm. the increase that that um, Caroline requested in, in the document that she the five thousand right mm -hmm. is that included in this? Yes. 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 And then it's what two percent for Salme? Yes. Okay. I understand. Any other questions or concerns about um, the executive office? We move on to the next elections and registrations, which this is just a nominal increase based on the number of elections. Is that, oh, wait, there's, there's, well, there's that's, also the other yes. salary. It's complex salaries, it's getting 2%. But the, the election stipends and the um, uh, the only thing that's based on, yeah, most of that is just the amount of um, elections. So she was getting 200 per election, and they're recommending 300 on the stipend for elections. Was she, and could you remind me what she was asking, what she was recommending? Five. five. She wanted 800 bucks, right? She yeah. wanted uh, five, 500. Which was it 800? Oh, no, it was it Oh, per, five per, yeah. So the line would be 2,000 instead of 1,200, right? Sorry? Is that? Yes. Okay, thank you. What line is that? Uh, so, <laughs> so, so there are four elections. She was asking for 200 more per election, but she was $800 more than that, so mm -hmm. that line would go from 1,200 to 800, to 2,000. If that was granted. If that was granted. Yeah. At this point, just as a reminder, we can recommend that, but it's a bottom line budget at the end of the day. It's like right. the board decides what mm -hmm. right. Right. Yeah. We have, If we do have a change at the bottom, though, it's we need to have a place where we're recommending it. Right. It's like board's decision. Yeah. But. yeah. So the okay. increase that you you did give an increase in this line. I did. We went up in hundred dollars per election. So you also have to remember yeah. that the first four hours that she worked, she was being paid by her her town clerk salary. Mm -hmm. After that is where this kicks in, and she's averaging very close to what she gets paid by her salary per hour. And I based it on. I'm going to say, I based it on, the it, was, it goes 7 to 7, I think it was 15 hours I based it on, because it's 7 to 7 is the election, right? And then I had the counting and the putting everything away and all of that, so I based it on a 15-hour day. Was the public hearing?
hearing, not for the public testing, too, that she is I know, required. I know, I don't for that. This was for the election stuff. I'm right, but she's required by law to have that public certification of the, it's related yeah, to the election. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's, it's, you know, it's, she has to organize it. It's not, it's not nothing. But sometimes it's done on her time here. You have, yes, I'll answer that. Okay. Hours are taken as compensation for time they put in. So the office is closed when she decides that she's going to get her compensation and take it out on another day. Okay, does that make sense? She works hours. Uh, I understand. On her town clerk hours. I, I'll, I'll say, and she I takes those hours off at another time. I don't think we're overpaying the town clerk. That's all. I don't. I'm not gonna. I think we're paying the fine. But, but she, when she works additional hours, she takes it off in this spot. Denise, is there more set up time because the polls will be down at the American Legion than here? Again, I think that she takes some of her time that week and goes and sits down during the day. I don't know if it's all of it. I don't know that. We don't have, she doesn't fill out a time card. So unfortunately, because she's salary, we don't know on a weekly basis what she works and why it's over the 20 hours if she does work that. So we're getting her to try to fill out a time card so we know more about it. But until we have a year's worth of stuff, I'm not willing as a board selectman to increase based on this is what I think I need. Can I, can I just make a comment? I don't disagree with what you're trying to do. I understand that. Uh, town elections, elections are such an important part of the fabric of our democracy. And I think they have been running well. And so we think, they well, let's just always run well, no matter who's there. And I'm not sure that that's really true. And so it's hard for me to look at at least not entertaining the notion of, of raising that $1,200 to $2,000 as the town clerk recommended. It really is a small, small matter in my opinion. And I think if it helps uh, to provide some additional remuneration to the town clerk who really has done, you know, a good job managing the elections. And that's really, that is the most important thing that a town clerk can do for us. So it's, it's an opinion I, you know, as you will. Is it possible to increase the stipend or even more than the select board increase to acknowledge that the quality of the work um, and not what uh, up to 2,000 but perhaps halfway to that. I, 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 Watching the elections from a different perspective, I really understand that it's uh, it's a it's a lot. It's, I mean, I and this is somebody that. who's very experienced. I understand that, that. Yeah. but we don't have any control over her or or the position. So what you guys don't necessarily see is the whole picture. But you can you can make any recommendation you want. I mean, it's up to the committee. This is where the board of selectmen are right now. Any other thoughts or comments on the uh, elections and registrations? And are we we're looking at that? Uh, that one's a little bit of an odd one because there's four elections. Yeah. And we've got the, the, the piece. So Joe's approach of the, of the top down might be harder to look at. Mm -hmm. So, and if, if there are no more questions, we can move on to uh, financial administration. So maybe I'll let me take a minute to say this. This is my. Uh, let me use an example, but I, I personally work here. So I, I take the 
the, the end of November actuals, which is 36. Just to, I understand, Caroline, that there might be more than, but it shows as 90% expenditures. Um, if I say, okay, there's probably another 10% coming in of that actual, then you get 39,800, and then the act, and then you, if you put the, the general increase of 2%, then you get 40,596. So that's, to me, when I look at it, that's kind of like in the bulk. Um, anybody have comments on, on my approach? I think does it, is it making some sense? Do you see any holes in it? <coughs> and if you look at past years, um, it's somewhat in line. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's probably that's another good question. Nothing, nothing's you jumping out at you from on, when you look at that past years. That's pretty. Yeah. So, I mean, so what we were saying, just in terms of a general approach, that might be an approach for people to follow you know, at a high, very high level to see do we, you know, how does it compare to prior year, compared <laughs> to the actual versus what the proposed is. If it's generally in the ballpark, you know, that's, that's, that's a number that I think if somebody asked me about why do you think that should be 40,000, you know, 40,696, I'd say, well, Here's why. This is the process that I went through, and I think it's that I think it's that transparency and just consistency that's important to have as we go through this. I think that makes sense. So, do we have any any thoughts or more discussion on the financial administration? It seems like it's been lying to me, but mm -hmm. we can move on. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <coughs> The only thing I'll mention on that is because it um, it wasn't budgeted appropriately for 2019 because we didn't get the um, contract in time. So you, you might see it. You will see a more of a difference between that because 19 <coughs> was, wasn't properly budgeted. And and that's not something we have a lot. Of, it kind of is what it is, right? The evaluation. It's not like a, there's not a lot of choices there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, seeing it, we're over 122% at this point. Um, following Joe's logic, it makes sense that that's a little higher. Any questions or thoughts on that? On the review valve? Are we under budgeted? Sorry, question. Good question. Are we un under budgeted? Where we spent eighty four hundred this year, and we're only budgeting six thousand for the appraisal? Mm. No, I don't think we are. Are we, Carolyn? Looks like it. You like you're you're saying we've already expended twelve thousand two forty five, and now we're but proposing. So on line 50, we've already spent 8470 in the appraisal, so do we get a reduction in the contract, or did, was that two payments? Or? The contract has gone up in 19 and in 20, and so the 20 is the actual contract amount, but the 19 is not, and so it looks highly overexpended because we got the contract too late in the year to budget for it appropriately last year. But that doesn't explain it's less this for yeah. 2020 than it was for 2019. Why is the expense 8,470 is I think what Lynn was asking. Oh, I see. So the contract pricing, we've already spent in 19,470. I see. Did we get a reduction to go to 6,000 or are we under budgeted again? Um, the six thousand is the budget is the contract um, the contract amount. I can't speak to why we're overexpended, but I will certainly look into it. Could, could, could I make, is it because the information systems license is in the wrong? Could it be in the wrong line? That if that offhand looks like the case. Yes, but I can't say that offhand. I'm seeing a lot of fifty percent Yeah. 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 Below it, from 52%. It could have been applied to the wrong That's line off. Yeah, yeah. We'll find out, get back to you guys on that. Any other questions from the line for personnel administration? Yeah. So, get another 
choices in this one. Yeah. Dental benefits, line 62. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is there any interest in uh, full time has taken dental? That has not yet been determined. Um, as of yet, it's not a strong yes, but I haven't heard back from everybody. If it's um, if people don't like the current proposal, the board um, can propose something else. So um, they elected to keep the funds in there. But at this point, it's um, not going forward, but it's not not going forward either. There's not been a determination. We have to have six. Correct? We have to have six out of eight people right. on board. And I have one no and two no answers. So. Unless by the 18th we get some answers, I'd like to have that go back to a dollar. We'll see what we can do. We can survey the two people. Okay. Tell them we need an answer right away. Can I, can I make a comment? Mm -hmm. In my just curmudgeonly style. So, my philosophy is that to the extent possible, we as an employer should be paying our employees as close to market as we possibly can. And until we feel that we've done that, for our employees. I think adding a benefit that falls unevenly upon employees is not where I would put my money. I would rather take that 2000 and put it in salary somewhere to, to raise uh, someone's market. It's just my own feeling about benefits and how they're not distributed evenly to everybody. And we do have some people that we know, whether it's fire or whatever, that are not at the market. So that's just my a sort of a philosophical comment. Uh, there are a lot of companies who will compensate people for not taking the benefit. Mm -hmm. That's pretty common. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so that it's fair. So if you're not if you're not taking the benefit, you're getting compensated right. otherwise. That's not part of this plan. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's that's right. I think that the that's market the, the market would normally the trend is to balance things more fairly as opposed to doing something else. Off center, so I, I agree. Um, are there any other thoughts or discussion items on personnel <laughs> administration? Planning and zoning. We're looking at a decrease overall of 28.6%. Only because we moved 41 to the building sector line. Okay. We moved the 4100 out of there. Which one line? Uh, uh, 66. Gotcha, gotcha. 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 I'm sorry, 67. So otherwise? It would be about 2%. Just on that <coughs> increase. So, stupid question, man. Of course. Um, thank you. <laughs> it, the <coughs> is confusing to me. The default budget ends up being more than the proposed appropriation. How did, how did that happen? Just because it seems like the default budget would be less. If the, there there's a decrease in, in the expense this year. But it was a higher last year. The default is last year's budget plus some gotcha. some, some adjustments. Any contractual agreements? Okay. But should we have taken some of that sixty-five and put, I'm asking Caroline some of that sixty-five <coughs> where you move the building the, the move the forty-one hundred out of there? Should we have put that money in there on that I, line? You could do that, but I think it complicates. The transparency of what was the approved budget. Okay. It, get, it becomes harder to track those dollar amounts. So I think it's clearer to see where the dollars were and whether they were approved, and that you're picking you're follow, you're picking the 2019 <coughs> dollars and carrying them forward. Mm -hmm. And then in the case of a budget, a default budget, you would just move those dollars around to compensate for how they were moved. Okay. But rather than moving, if you left in line 67, you can you can understand it. Rather than move it, that's my opinion. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Any more questions or comments on the 
Line 71, advertisement. You going to have enough money in that line? You overspent this year. I don't know enough about we, spending. We typically don't, don't overexpend that line. It trends as not overexpending. We've had a number of cases um, more than usual, I would say, for planning and zoning. There's no way to predict what it would be, but given the trend, you know, we, we thought that it would be fine to keep it where it That's is. That's reimbursed money, isn't it? It is reimbursable, yes. Ready to move on to government, build, uh, government buildings. So, following Joe's approach, if we look at the bottom line, we're decreasing by 5.3 percent. Am I right? Looking at expenditures, though, he's suggesting that we get these ninety nine dollars for the gal, I think. Yes. But it's not complete because there could be one to two months not posted. Right. I mean, I was just kind of taking whatever the actuals were and being conservative and saying, well, treat it as a ten months. Uh, that there's about sixteen percent of that number still to be spent. So in the case of seventy thousand seven fifteen. Don't do math in public, but let's see. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my thing. 82, 29, being recorded too. So that would mean the actuals for, you know, if you take 70,000 and you put another 15, 60%, you get 82,000. So that's, then if you added another 2% on it, just an overall number, that still comes below. Uh, well, no, it, it's, it's, that in that case, that would be less than, so if you take 82,000 times, that comes up to 83. So there's a different, if you take that approach, the proposed at 94,000, if you take the actual and you kind of plug it up, there's a $10,000 difference <laughs> between it. So then you can say, well, is that a material number? <laughs> Maybe it is with a total budget of 94,000. And, and can we come up with an explanation that we, we could all feel we could explain and make sense on why that number should be 94,000 and not 83,000 or somewhere in between that. Just, you know, it's a discussion point. And, you know, to me, it doesn't mean either one of those numbers are wrong. It just means, well, can we explain it away? Can we explain that difference? I, I think that's a reasonable yeah. way to look at it. Good. Okay. Thank you. Just have my hand up waiting for you. Yeah. I'm done. Okay. Um, so, slightly different question about I noticed quite a few in this section, water and sewer charges. Mm -hmm. And with the conversation we had just before this meeting, mm -hmm. I, there may be some substantial increases in total, because I don't do math in public either. I do it poorly in private. So you know, I just think I'm not sure what it all adds up to, but it could be uh, some impact on that. Because it wasn't the first time we heard about the increase. Yeah. So I don't think any department is going to have their increases contained in those lines. Right, so I'm just, yep. just a heads up. Yep. I think we may have to revisit that when we have more information. Yep. And you know, the decision is not going to be made till March. So who knows what will come out of that and when we'll see a change. But from the earlier conversation, I think we're looking at some sort of change mm -hmm. midway through the year next year. When we look at the potential impact on the overall budget, though, the amount that we spend for water and sewer compared to the Budget is a pretty tiny, yeah, mm -hmm. tiny number. So it's, it's, a, it's a point. Question on line 91. What are we getting for 15000 It's been in here for several years. Straight across the board. It says repairs, maintenance to the town hall. Well, 15000 We're going to. We have a PO for the windows. We have, do you want to say something? I do. I just um, the reason it, it was bumped up to try to accomplish the outside portico, and and we've yet to get a historically appropriate vendor who can 
you know, the, the appropriate kind of vendor to give us a quote for the portico. So it was a sharp and dark when we first budgeted budgeted for that, and then we have yet to actualize even a quote for that because they're busy. So in the meantime, as Denise was about to explain, we're um, picking away at other known problems in the building, such as the, the leaky windows. The leaky windows are all being re, um, there's a PO out for it, they're all going to be refinished so they can close, so you're not having all this cold air then that's coming in tonight, um, to every window in this, at least this floor. Um, we're also painting the healing uh, walls as you walk in the building, in the corner. That's going to be done. I see. Is that your point? That's happening. This. That's happening now. I'm going to say. But that's. What he, I thought he was asking what kind of projects is well, that coming. I. I am, in particular, in light of the fact that this has pretty much been a steady line all the way along. It was in 2018. It was quite a bit more. And I haven't seen any major improvements. And I know the police station downstairs hasn't seen too much from what I've seen the last couple of times I've been down there. So I'm just curious, whenever I see a, a line like this, and I used to see this a lot in the military where people put this in, mm -hmm. and you find out they're compounded and buying other things with it, and that's my chief concern, there ought to be a breakdown of that kind of money as to what we're getting. And painting is at 15,000, I don't think. Just my thought. You're absolutely right, it isn't. But, you know, we have been trying to get things repaired, and because of the building and the condition of certain things, we're not able to get people to give us quotes. And she said the portico uh, is one of them. So I wonder if I can help. So over the years when I was on the board, for example, we replaced the membrane roof, that, that flat roof that was there that was impacting the police department because it was leaking down at the police department. Almost from the day we put it. So yeah. we had to repair that. We also uh, repaired the the undulating tiles. Now, there may be another problem, but we did repair that undulating, ti undulating tiles in the police. We had the whole roof, steeple roof, uh, repaired, which was very expensive because we had to, the, the vendor, the contractor, I mean, had to rent a crane in order to get up there. So it was a really expensive proposition. We've had air conditioners and condensers that have had to be replaced. So you don't necessarily see these things, but they affect the whole building. And some of them are maintenance issues, like the mold, a repair, uh, mold uh, remediation that happens every year in order to keep the air within the building as you know as safe as possible for all for all the inhabitants, residents. So that's just some of the ones. I'm sorry, but no, it's okay. I had some past experience. I thought it might be helpful. But we also had to repair the elevator this year. Um, can you think of any of the other things that we did in here? I mean, it happens, but we're having a really hard time getting vendors to quote. That's and then they came to look at the windows to get fixed. They ordered the wrong parts because these windows are so old. They, when they started to do the project, it was like, no, we have to go back. And now they come up with $2,000 more. So, you know, the building. <laughs> mm. Other items within um, government buildings that have questions on? I want to spend a lot of time talking about cemeteries. <laughs> 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 that was that it's going up from going <laughs> um, I assume there's no questions about cemeteries. <coughs> Mark and those guys seem to do a great job. So they're very pittance that they spend every year on this. Insurance, uh, that's just uh, what can you say? You got pay it. Yep. Any, anybody have a question or anything on that? On. Regional associations, again, that's a set fee, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We are uh, okay. this is 21% increase. Yeah, what went up? In which line? In the 107. It went up $19. It says 21%. Yeah, it seems a little. It's the percentage increase that's wrong, right? Yeah. So 
I retract my question. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Chief Ducharme is what he, what I, if I remember correctly, what he told us is that he he has a full complement now, and so he does expect to be able to do forty thousand dollars worth of contracted services. Mm -hmm. So there's one difference, yeah. and one other difference is in the equipment, where uh, line one twenty eight, where he is <coughs> trying to do some uh, capital, small time capital improvements that would not be in the budget every year, and that is the replacement of video recording systems. Mm -hmm. Right. But if I, if you go back, so we have 2017 appropriation and expended actuals, and we have the same for 18, and even if you do 19, it's always like, so 2017, it was over budgeted by about 10%, 2018, it was over budgeted by about 15%. If you take this a little, algorithm that I was using just to get a ballpark number, it's 9%. So it's, it's pretty consistent that the appropriation is always anywhere between 9 and 15% above what their actuals are. And it's good. I'm not, I'm not complaining that we're spending less than what's budgeted, but should the budget numbers be more realistic and then have people adhere to those numbers 
that they have to adhere to versus versus a number that they know they have to basically a 10 percent. I mean, do we want to give the police department or any police department a 10 percent fudge rate on, on what their actual expenditures would be to the year? If that's going to be the, if that's what we want to do, then we should just know that. But I think that's the point that I'm trying to make. So, Joe, if so, as, as I hear, as I listen to you, I, I also am cognizant of the fact that you know the, the salaries for the officers are below market. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, does anybody dis discount that or not? Be point. No. Yeah. So, I mean, if what if we took some of that and say, look, find it in your budget somewhere, but we want you to add whatever the amount is to the salaries line. Mm. Recognizing we don't have that yeah. authority. But right, right, right. But I mean, you have to, right, it's a recommendation. Like you say, it's going to have to come out. We're going to have to commit to where we're thinking, we're thinking it is. You have to you make sure you understand that every officer got a market increase this year that, what, that came out of their budget that wasn't proposed. A so what we're saying just, is let's do the same thing. But we did it because we had so many open positions that didn't get filled, so we had that money because we had several officers leave, right. we didn't get your new ones, they got paid less, so on and so forth. So we did make market adjustments, for including the part-timers and all officers except for the chief. Did you bring them up to market? How do you know? I know what they get paid, that's all I know. You know what they and get paid And I know what the other PDs are paying. I know that it's thirty thousand dollars less than Dover is getting, and Dover still is not Dover. I understand that, but that's what your market is. If you go to Rochester, you find out that they're getting quite a bit more. And Rochester is the lowest paid around. Right, but it might. I mean, I can understand it could be a quality of life thing here. I mean, if I were a cop, I I prefer a town like Rochester versus Boston, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, just uh, dealing with that. But, um, but so anyway, so I don't know. Do we, you know, does the select board go back to the chief and say, or, well, you're saying they're already at the market. So in, in No, I'm not saying they're at market. Oh, I said okay. they got a market increase. A market. All of them got it except for the chief. Um, so we're making efforts to get yeah. them to market. But, I mean, if, if we did it all in one year, you guys wouldn't like that either. But <laughs> if, if you, you could do it all in one year just by the fact that he has a 9%. He could, he could he could give everybody, well, I can't say, I don't have to do the numbers differently, but he basically has a 9% buffer, buffer mm -hmm. in budget mm -hmm. that now he probably can't change salaries without public select. Correct. Right? So, but he, he could go out and, and and buy some other things under his control of that budget with that with that extra money that he has. Well, I guess he has to well, go to the select. Well, they have to go to the select board for it. Yeah, because they yeah. Okay. And, so, so just so I understand, when you said there was a market adjustment for the officers, there was. Um, that means, so so that was like on a percentage basis, was that an adjustment greater than their 2% or whatever increase that they were got? You made a, you made a, uh, their net, the salary we're looking at now, we look at an increase of 2%, mm -hmm. that's based on what they're making and fund up rate that they get this right. year. Right. Yeah. So, so, that's so yes. Yeah. But one of the, one of the things that I I I have a difference in opinion with what the chief has because when he when the raises are um, given he bases it on merit on their reviews. So mm -hmm. even if you gave a two percent raise, someone might not get anything, and someone might get the difference somewhere right. else. That, I think, is some of the reasons why we are below market. Because there's got to be a way that we can say, all right, this is a market increase, and then this part of it is going to be performance increase. Right. And we, we have to do, do we have, No, we have to do that. So we're, yeah. we're trying to get back to doing that. Mm -hmm. But he, and he, and it's his department, and he doesn't want to reward for poor performance. Sure. So I get that, but somewhere along the line, you're not going to you're going to go backwards again on what you're paying your salaries because they're not getting the raises that we're authorizing to give. 
Right. So even an it's, average performer is better than nobody in the No, world. <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. Uh, so you're right. It's that challenge of you have um, inflation, you know, the 2% inflation mm -hmm. adjustment, mm -hmm. just cost of living adjustment. Then you have career improvements. People are you know, right. they, they're doing that. They're taking out. <laughs> um, and then you just have the markets out of whack. And the same person is doing the exact same job, but the market's up here now versus it used to be here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, those are all things that they have to have to deal with. And we're trying to work on that. So and we're now fully staffed. So we're now fully staffed. In the market, like I'm sorry? Give them 2% adjustments and say, here's your merit percent you can give and here's your market. So then it's like 2% separate so they have it clear in the budget. I think that that's what we're working, trying to go towards. And I, I understand his reasonings, but we also, if we don't do that, we're never going to stay competitive. Right. But 2% is enough to, even to solve for those three things. So yeah. both, you know, if somebody who's, who's improved in, in what they offer, somebody just a basic merit increase because they're doing better at that mm -hmm. same job level, as well as cost of work. 2% mm -hmm. you can't cover that. I mean, you can't even keep, no. even if you probably took all that money and gave it to your best performer, you're probably still not enough for that mm -hmm. person. Right. It would help me if on the 18th we could find out what every position's making for money and what they got for merit and see what their increase is so we could see if we could pinpoint some money on certain ones. It so would help me. It's not, it's not up to us to make decisions on individuals. And so no, it's just not it's salary. It's, it's not it's not that's not our position. We can recommend, which is what we just did, that the board yeah. has every right to set salary guidelines. Yeah. So here's your salary base. Two two percent is across the board. We want, if we gave them another two or whatever, and the two percent is just is a market adjustment. Yeah. And you could just say based on satisfactory performance, something that is not difficult for people to meet. They have to be really unsatisfactory not to get it. Yeah. So the board has every right to to provide guidelines mm -hmm. like that and expect department heads to follow them. So the question I think that Joe has is can we can we look at that police budget? and increase that salary line somewhat without increasing the bottom line of the department. Right. Well, I think that's right. kind of where we are. And so maybe that's the challenge to him to say, well, you spent, you're, you're, you're probably going to spend $517,000 in 2019. If things all stay equal, you're probably going to spend 527 next year. Work your budget according to that number and decide where that, where that should go. Or should we say, well, you, you know, because we want to solve some of the, uh, the pay structure problem, say it's not 527 of the proposed budget, it's really 540, still lower than it's 574, but that's the money that you have extra to, to try to address, yeah, because he knows his department, that you try to address your, your salary within your, within your department. Mm -hmm. So uh, police salary is not public information? It's only a few jobs anyway, but right. So I guess what maybe what Charlie's asking isn't necessarily what an individual person, what their, their name is, but to see yeah, we don't have to know the names. a list of the of the okay, this is a salary, this is this is how much the market adjustment was, this is what a percentage this is how it would change with that, that, you're just saying breaking it down rather than seeing right. it in one lump where you right. can't really get a good concept of how much that is. We, we talk about 1% for one person, 3% for another, but we don't see that. I guess that's what you're asking for. Is that Basically, that's what I would, I would still say that that's the chief's decision. We, we just have to give him the money to manage his department. Mm -hmm. right. and, and I think we're probably, you know, we've heard both from him as well as our own discussions here, is that we're, we're kind of setting the department up for failure based on the Based on probably their market and skill set, and so should should it really be two percent, more than two percent? Should it be more that he has a little bit more flexibility to do that? I would not be in agreement to say bump the number of five seventy four, which is the proposed number, by five percent. I mean, I, I wouldn't go with that because the trend in my mind is already he's nine, you know, he has a nine percent buffer. So I think it's somewhere between, you know, maybe just. A basic increase from 2019 of 2%, and maybe a little bit more, but below the 9% overall actual budget for 2019 to 2020. With a recommendation that salaries be addressed. 
Right. That that's where the that's where the money should go because we all we, right we hear that all the time. It's a problem getting the people there. You know you can't keep them. Then we spend more money training them. Um, and all it, you know all indications are over the past few years the taxpayers are paying enough money to support a department at five hundred seventy four thousand and the trend is well, twenty eighteen that you know the taxpayers are putting in money for five hundred fifty seven thousand. And the expenditure is probably going to be 517 in 2019. So they're willing to do something about it. I thought it makes sense. Follow up on the police. Didn't they come in asking for 3%? Yes. Okay. Right, how many? There's the chief, and how many full time officers? Four or five? There's a sergeant, and there was five, five total. Five plus the chief. Five plus the chief. Okay. Five, okay. So on the when he came in and presented, he gave a handout that had a chief full time and part time. So is there a part time person that's not his wage in that? <coughs> so he's like there's a chief line for fifty three thousand, full time line for two hundred and sixty two, and then a part time. Part, part time officers <coughs> part time officers. Sorry, can Part-time officers are not the chief. The chief has yeah. his own line, though right. he's sometimes paid out of contract services. <coughs> the chief um, got the $5,000 increase that he does. Uh, why is, is the past few years this chief salary line has not been fully expended? Is that because of the hours that he worked? Or? It's it's it looks like it's less than in seventeen, even less than that in twenty eighteen. It looks like. Do you want to? Um, when when he works details, um, that money comes out of the contracted services line. So we budget for no details for him, just in case that's the case. But he typically consistently works details. Because his details will count towards the hours that he is allowed to work under his his retirement right. plan. Mm -hmm. But, but I think, if I may, that it, yeah. it just it does support Joe's argument mm -hmm. that, look, we don't want to, we certainly don't want to disadvantage the police department, but based on expenditures over the last several years, uh, we think the number could be a, whatever it is, but we also, we want to make sure that we, uh, and I haven't done the math, so I don't, I, that we want to make sure that we recommend that that money be diverted from some of the other salary lines into the full-time salaries line. And I don't know what the appropriate number is, but I, I agree with the, I think, with the overall direction. Yeah, I think we should be, we, we should be paying a police officer something like <laughs> more great. If, I, I don't really know how far under uh, they are. They just got a, they did get a market adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, but, but that it makes total sense that if we've got extra buffer and it's already being appropriated, that it should be used to bump it up. Yeah, I mean, I look, if you look through the line items, when I look through the line items real quickly, it doesn't seem to be, based on the existing budget, it's an easy thing to move stuff around. Maybe there is, but, um, oh no, let, let, me, let me take all that back. I, I forgot, I should be looking at the actual time. Never mind. <laughs> To your point, for example, professional development line one twenty one, our budget's four thousand, but we've never spent more than twenty two hundred, so there's a couple thousand dollars. And then that was on fuel. You know, we're budgeting thirteen thousand on line one thirty four, but our tops eleven thousand. So are we anticipating fuel to go up or is there a few thousand dollars? Like there's five thousand total that we can based on See, well I think you, you should if you look at Fuel, to, uh, fuel's an example. So, to, if you take Can you get the thousand, line number, Joe? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 134. 134. So, just as an example. So, we're, and I'm sure that's a pretty consistent number, of, you know, that it, it doesn't vary month to month. So, if you have nine, if you do 9,000 by nine, oops. 13,000. Can I ask a question now? 
if we've got more detailed work, are they, are they using our, car, our mm -hmm. cruisers and therefore Yes, fuel and also and fuel and retirement are down because salaries are down because they weren't fully staffed. So now step salaries will be fully expended and the retirement line will be fully expended and they'll spend more fuel because they'll be doing more detail because they'll have the staff to do it in theory. So now I don't think we have to try to figure out where he's going to get that money from. I think it's great that we would give him the flexibility to take some of that offering and use it for salary. Yeah, and, and true. And, and maybe the point for tonight is just people think about it, right? John, the, the purpose here wasn't really to solve anything, just for people to go through, make their comments, and, and this was a good discussion, and mm -hmm. maybe people should think about it. It's like, what you think about it? Yeah, okay, that's a good so with that, any more discussion of the police budget? We move on to fire. Uh, the, uh, well, I'm going to look at the, at the bottom line first. And we have a salary issue there, obviously, that we've been talking about for a few years. Um, um, I I fully support paying firemen more than than getting, which is less than minimum wage. It's you know that's the case. I I don't understand the the whole concept of whether they are an actual employee and whether they get if they're an actual employee whether they then have to be paid time and a half or um, uh, have other taxation <laughs> issues. The, the, the concept of the point system, I think, from what I read in the New Hampshire Initial Association article, is that you have to be careful about not compensating them too high. If you do, then that becomes like a regular employee, and then you have all these other sort of legal requirements that are, that are in place. And so it is essentially still it's in between a, a volunteer and a, and, a, and, a, and a professional, and it's, it, that's just a concept that it's hard to, to, to grapple with. And so when we talk about salaries compared to, say, the people who work at the dump, uh, I'm sorry, at the transfer station, uh, you know, it's not an apples and apples. You can't, you can't make that, because if you paid them what you pay a, a, another regular employee, then we would they would have to be actual employees. Um, I think that's... Well, they are employees. It's just that they don't have um, designated times. You know, it's, it's, it's not like the transfer station where you know you're going to work three days a week and you want to work from the center to this hour. That's not how they operate. But they are employees. So the check comes from the town. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. they're an, empl they're an employee of, a, of the town of Rollinsford and they're covered as such. It's it, yes and no. Um, they are employees covered work under workers comp. So we, so we do part of our workers compensation premium covers the fact that we have firefighters. If we pay the firefighters over for any individual over fourteen thousand dollars, that would change our workers compensation premium for those roles. But to John's point, there's a twenty percent rule that once you get. Um, within 20% of what the actual sal actual market wage would be for that role, then they are, a, you know, completely considered an employee, which means they are um, fully, we, we as an employer would be fully accountable to all the Department of Labor standards um, in paying them. And so, um, we, we are not alone in having this point system, and there's nothing wrong with the point system um, as a nominal compensation and that's what makes it workable is that it's nominal compensation kind of like a select board stipend or a treasurer's stipend when you keep it low as a stipend then you don't have to pay overtime and you don't have to pay attention to all these other um, Department of Labor rules but once you get beyond that 20% of market wage um, and, and keep in mind you have different positions you have you know firefighters and you have levels of officers so that wage would, would be different accordingly, but the 20% rule would then bump those people into a different employment category where, you know, I'm not sure I fully understand all the implications of that, but minimally, um, we would, they, over time. 
As we're not even close to no, no. even no. near that. No. Let me tell you that. Yes. No, okay. Yes. So. Yes. Okay. So, no, we're not even near it. No. Um, I have, I have proposed. I have a um, recommended salary that I I can't discuss with you currently because I haven't discussed it with the board of selectmen yet. But um, <coughs> this. Um, we can change this, and as soon as we, I, it's hopefully it's going to be at the next meeting. We're going to discuss it and see what we can do. But I did a, I did a pay scale from 750 to uh, 1150, and how that would impact the budget based on call volume, how many hours in a call, how many people went. So I have it. I have done it. It's complete, but I, I can't share it yet. But so, so my only point is, is as long as that doesn't kick us into the twenty percent or the it won't the we need even near it. Yes. Yeah. So it's I I spoke to Mark about it just to make sure that I was on the right track, and nobody would make less than what they're making now. Some will make more, but you know a firefighter is between fifty five to. Seventy-five thousand a year. We're not going to be paying an individual person that that kind of cash. That's just well. But it's not about the hourly. It, it's it's more the hourly wage. If you're going to pay them hourly, it's not like right. because that would be a full-time salary. So if you break that, if you break up fifty-five thousand dollars into what the annual wage for, the, for the, the hourly wage rather would be for that, it's twenty percent of that because we we acknowledge we're not going to employ them full time. But as an hourly wage, how does fifty-five thousand dollars hourly relate to what we're proposing to pay them hourly? We're not even close. Right. But I just wanted to make that yeah. clarification. Yeah. Right. So that yeah. would mean that if the firefighter is fifty grand, as long as they don't get enough points, they're going to push them over ten grand. Mm -hmm. They meet the the level of the law that, that John said. Mm -hmm. That's I think we're safe with this. There's some discussion that we have to still have with the fire chief and the select board. Um, we're trying to go in the right direction. Yeah. I'm curious, Denise. Um, I know you can't give us details, but are you hoping that whatever that amount is would come out of the fire department budget, budget as it currently stands, or elsewhere in the budget, or, or would you see it adding to the bottom line? Um, I think it's going to have to be added a little bit in the bottom line because there's, there, in my opinion, there's not a lot of wiggle room here. Also proposing that the chief goes to a special again person to pay for call. Um, it, isn't this a stipend? It is a stipend, but he also he also gets per call out of line 142. Oh, so you're going to take him? I'm going to leave that alone with what it is, but have only 141 a stipend, and that and that's it. But not getting per call pay. His per call pay comes out of that. Okay. On 142. Yes. Okay. He he gets the last two. I think it's two years. Two years. Two years that he gets. He gets his stipend, which is line one forty one. Yes. And he also gets the calls that he goes on. Times he he gets the points. So he gets five points. Yes. He's in that line of one forty two, as well for his points. Is your suggestion to remove him from that line and yes. he only has a stipend? Correct, but not that stipend. Okay, got it. Thank you. So, got it. So just, what's, what does a point equal? What, what do those five points translate to in dollars? It depends on how many And how many The way they do it, it's he takes the, the quarter, he takes his line, his yearly budget, divides it by four. Every quarter he has so much money, and then that is divided by the amount of calls. If I'm understanding this correctly, right? Divided by divided the total number of points. Points. Well, so so people. Points. Cause, so a point is an hour. So there are three right? hundred points. Necessarily, right? So people go to however many calls they go to, and however right. many people there are go to however many calls, and they get a different. The first point value mm -hmm. is one for firefighters, and it's a yep. different number otherwise according to rank. But then right. every subsequent hour is one, one point, point regardless of rank. Right. So you take everybody's total accumulated points 
um, and you take that quarterly dollar amount and divide it by the points and to figure out the amount. point value. And then they each get their points times right, right. times the point value. Yeah. Yes. And so if you're so really varies. busy for a quarter, your hourly wage goes, goes down. Right. The work, unless you work, the more you get. Yeah. Right, John? Yeah. The less you work, the more you get. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, what the question is, is this, is this one, where if someone here goes to the work to make South Berwick, South Berwick reimburses Rollinsburg? No, wrong, no. They have a mutual aid agreement. They yep. do not get reimbursed to go to another, nor do we reimburse them, and nobody reimburses us to go to. Detail. The only time that it possibly might happen is if it has to do with a FEMA incident where they have a, a major catastrophe and then they can get reimbursed for their time if they're in another town or city. Um, but that town or city has to apply for it and they've got it. I, I can only remember one time that they got it from another city that they were doing That's something there. Yeah, but it's a half, yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. But no, it's a mutual aid agreement yeah. that's, so everyone wins. We can't really talk much more about salaries because we know something's coming. Yeah. And we'll, we'll see that next time. I hope so. I hope we talk about it on Monday. Are there any other items in the fire department? Well, similarly, when we look at the yeah. appropriations and expenditures, you know, what we're seeing, even look at 17, uh, I'm a little confused with line 170G, 1909.4%. I don't know what that is. It looks like a mistake. What line is it again? Uh, 170 G. 170 G. And I know they were, you know, we had capital expenses with vehicles and things mm -hmm. that I thought was jumping it, but I'm surprised that it's not expensive. Unless it yeah. carried forward. Although, again, <coughs> the fire department has, although they can take that back. Oh, never mind. It doesn't make sense. Maybe you say think similarly, fans. the money is yes. there, it's just not being expended. And you say, look, exactly. we really want this going to south. Right. Yeah, more focus what their actual. So don't necessarily have to change the bottom line. Correct. Similar to the police. Um, it does eat into that um, that fund balance that you want to grow over time. Mm -hmm. But as Joe mentioned before, is there is there another way to do that other than to slightly over budget on several things? Do you have a line item that is. Um, you know, how, how else would you deal with it? You, you can do it by Warren article. You can do it by, um, you know, having a really extraordinary contingency line or other line. But it, as Denise said, it's not the board's intent to pad the budget in order to increase the fund balance. <coughs> it's just to have a budget that will take care of whatever um, trending contingencies might happen. Fuel prices might go up, you know. Staff comes or goes, whatever normal, whatever changes, and fluctuations in normal operations may occur, but not specifically or deliberately to fund the general fund. But you're seeing that trend over time, so the question is, can you adjust it a little bit? I mean, I think it would make sense to have an overall contingency line within the budget. You know, if you're, if you're gonna if you're gonna say people should should budget to their actual plus a little more or whatever and exceptional, and then yes, you want a contingency amount because you need to move things around, and then you have the fund balance as another thing, and then when you're all done, whatever is left at the end of the year, right, rolls into the fund balance, which would be not only where the individual departments were efficient in managing their budgets. But also, maybe you didn't spend the whole contingency, and that goes into it. Any other discussion in the fire department? Just so we're we're at uh, coming up on nine o'clock. Um, do we think we can stick through maybe we can get through the whole thing, or we we have the option to to defer and and uh, we'll have the 
whole school and the water district and, and whatever it is. Yeah, so yeah, so just so keep, keep going. Unless there's a mutiny here. <laughs> no, I'm having fun. Building inspection. Uh, that, that, oh, yeah, this is a move from another line item, right? So mm -hmm. that's, um, we don't probably need to any questions or any more discussion on that building inspection. Moving on to highways and streets. We're actually dropping, and I think that's largely coming from the road resurfacing, which was up. Got a question on that. Okay, the road maintenance, 198. You want to get down 25,000, yet you want a warrant article for 25,000 for sidewalks. Why not leave it in here and call it even? Yeah. If I may. Mm -hmm. Because um, the board's intent is to use, to offset the $25,000 expense for sidewalks with the Transportation Capital Reserve Fund. And the only way to do that is by way of a warrant article. Great. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, can I, so, so what you're saying is that that warrant article would, be, would the intent is to have it be funded entirely from the yes. fund. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they would have no impact. No impact. Correct. Thank mm -hmm. you. In my uh, view, uh, we, there's there's just tons of things we could spend money on resurfacing and not get it all done mm -hmm. in a year. So I, I don't I don't have a problem with the numbers that are, that are there. It's a decrease, but it is a significant increase when you go back to prior years. But I, I know the jobs that are out there are still to be done. And, uh, and I, I think that the crew that we have are doing a great job stretching what they have for budget and getting a lot more done than, than necessarily that they had in mind. Uh, the project you know, proposed is to finish Lago. Yep. Our roads are a lot better than Sunsworth and Dover. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's true. Just for information, I think the 2017 budget was supplemented by a warrant article. So that wasn't the entire. Correct. Right. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah what well, we did jump on um, last year. Yes. <coughs> and I think you made the graphic. Yes. What we used to spend. Yes, uh, we have made roads. significant improvements. <laughs> Yay, town. Go, town. <laughs> Um, street lighting, it uh, seems like there's nothing to talk about there, except we did talk about trying to get, is it an LED, some kind of a... Yeah. Um, That's not um, in this budget. Right. Yeah. Sanitation. It's a sanitation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it fell up a lot because it's so... Get rid of it. Right. right. Um, back in the bottom line is 222. But it starts at 222. I think we're doing what we can, which is by going back to um, getting away from single street and mm -hmm. um, using the bailer and getting a better handle on, on demo costs. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what else we could do. Mm -hmm. Any uh, thoughts or questions on sanitation? Good. Emergency management. Is health is pretty much of a set. I'm sorry? Health is a health item. That's just a so, Yeah. That's a contractual 36000 and the only thing, I'm sorry, the only thing I would do, you know, on health, that's ambulance service. Mm -hmm. do, do we actually have response times 
on when, when they're called, the minutes to, from the time they call to the minute they, they respond? Well, they're done through dispatch, so that would be available. That's available. Well, it's through dispatch, so, um, I mean, they get, we probably could ask for a report on There's only one, one service we consider when we look at that, right? Was it York? That's York, in South Borough, so but it's York Ambulance. It's located in South Borough. Okay. Yeah. But does the contract specify minimum times, or is it just I answer the call? I, I don't, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're stationed there, at the, they're at the fire station in South Borough, that's where they're located. No, I, but I mean, I don't think the response time is bad. And they're, they're pretty much the, are they the closest to mm -hmm. Rollinsburg? Yes, <laughs> yes, I mean, if they're out on a call, then you would either have Dover or um, uh, Stewart's in Summersworth, which is on 108, that's a long in my opinion. Is it the dispatcher that makes that decision? I mean, we'd call 911 and whoever was available, I guess, would respond. I think it would. I, I, I know sometimes the fire department makes that decision, sometimes police make that decision. Um, I don't But sometimes know. I think first responders get there before even an ambulance. So. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah. Just curious. Animal control, general assistance, parks and recreation. Nothing. Um, On parks and recreation. <clears throat> okay, we're not having a team camp this year, right? Correct. But you want to put fifteen thousand dollars in for a direct. Fund. That is the proposal. Yeah. We haven't discussed how much, but I mean, thirteen thousand yeah. is the amount that was in for teen. So the, the proposal is that we will hire a part-time, yeah. year-round director. This will be a direct hit to the budget because teen camp had um, revenue source. This will not. So that will be a hit to the budget. I mean, if there's anything above and beyond summer camp can apply to it, but I mean, teen was really the only one that really had more than, um, than um, the costs were. So it won't be a direct hit to it. So that, that change isn't reflected because we still show teen camp, is that correct? Well, it says summer teen camp, but it says no teen camp rec director notes. I see. Yeah, yeah. But because we have a daycare at the school, it's basically helping out other than Rollins said student uh, kids, because out of towners are coming in at a lower cost, and then the other areas. So why shouldn't we just have the Raleigh for just Rollins said? They actually, when they're here, they actually pay more. Yeah, the yeah they, they, they pay more I know. than the locals. Yeah. Yeah. But they're, they're not paying anything for the director. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Well, they're paying well, in excess of what... The 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 rate should be that's to keep funded. Raleigh level funded. Right. Direct is a separate account. I don't, I don't understand what the yeah. daycare at the school... I think he's talking about before and after camp. Before, before, before and after camp care? Yeah. Is that what yeah. you mean? Yeah. When talking about the, the rates that are being charged, I mean, we're meeting already for next year. So we are discussing it, and I believe that we should increase all of them, but increasing it higher to the uh, non-residents. Mm -hmm. um, so we are working on that. Susan? Okay. I would just like a, a request that, you know, next year when, assuming we have a director, mm -hmm. recreation director, that <laughs> present to the budget committee the budget for this entire section, I know that for the last couple of years, we've sort of had the, the summer camps budget and then the rest just is, you know, here. And it would just be nice just to have the whole budget presented by that person. Is I'm that, confused by what you're asking. Okay, so so when, the, when, when the, the rec people came to see us, they presented summer day camp and summer team camp. 
Correct. That's all okay. the responsible and senior program. Yes. So what I'm suggesting is perhaps the director can be responsible for managing the budget for this section, right. presenting, presenting, presenting the you know. Well, I disagree the, because the, they're, that person's not going to be in charge of Sam and Paul Family Fund Day. That that rec director will not be having that under the responsibility. From a from putting already, the budget together, it just it is. It would be just nice if we could just have that whole section of one budget. Maybe that person's not responsible. But I think, it's the, list, I think it's the decision the makers who make that okay, proposal, cool. which is the rec director. I mean, the um, chairs of the committee. Seven falls day. It, it just, you know, it just would, you know, we have all the fire department, we have all the fire, you know, police department in one budget. Just be nice to have parks and recs. Whoever does it, yeah. just present it. Maybe it's maybe it's the board, but it. It would be nice to have it presented as a unit because that's how it is here. It's just a budgetary <laughs> presentation. It's not it's going to manage pieces, and it's a small matter, so we don't have to. So we take can move on to the library. Yes, please. <laughs> please do. I'm done. Um, does anybody? Anybody have questions about the library? We obviously have a breakdown from the presentation that was presented. Um. Okay. Other? Uh. And debt service is what it is. So should we move on to capital projects? What is it that you'd like to say about them? I'm wondering. You mean about the capital projects? Yes. Just uh, are we looking for. I don't know. Hmm. This is the first time we see them, right? So mm -hmm. maybe we should ask the, our board member to yeah. just go through them. Maybe that would be helpful. All right. So the police group we're proposing line um, 272 would be the second year payment of a two year um, lease. And then Line 273 is a um, another cruiser coming in. Um, town hall generator is for here. Um, Thirty thousand is coming from the CIP. Um, the fire equipment um, that is. Um, I do not have an answer, but I will, you know, I will admit that that's um, my note, the $969 that happens to be in the equipment fund that could be used for this purpose, which the board did not decide to do. So that note should be removed. So at this point, that purchase will be either through taxation likely, or the board would hope that it would be funded through the CIP, but that determination I have yet to have from DRA. How to get DRA to say that that's something that we can use CIP funds for. Is, is it the board's intention that it come from CIP? Yes. If, yes, but if, we could, if, it, if, if it can, if but it can. there's certain things that can, according to Caroline, she's going to get that verified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, fire forestry um, is the other item that we're doing, and 55000 is coming from the CIP. And um, we're recommending a town, town hall assessment, and this will come from taxation of 30000 to get a full picture of what this building is for. Um, sidewalk repairs, which we have told you is coming from the transfer, I mean the transportation, transportation capital reserve. Um, yeah. And land appraisal, which is something that we is every year. I have a question, Denise, yep. on the line uh, the second RPD cruiser. I guess mm -hmm. it's line two seventy three. So when you say the one that says has thirty five thousand, thirteen thousand from CIP, does that mean that the rest of it is from taxation? No, so is that it, 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 it's no. the first year of the lease, right? No. It's just ignore the notes if you would. Ultimately, the whole payment is going to come through. Um, those notes need to go away. 
the thir so it's just a reminder to me about what happened this year, which is that the 13000 to equip the vehicle came out of CIP. The intention is that the lease payments, all three of them, because they're three-year leases, we have two left, two years left on the first le uh, lease and three on the new vehicle to be purchased in March. But So you've got three lease payments plus $13,000 to equip the vehicle, and all of it will come out of CIP. So the notes don't really reflect that, but the Warren article will. Could, Mark, could you, could you help? It just can we do it like one at a time? So the first RPD cruiser intent is CIP. Both, yes. And then the second one, CIP. Yes, entirely. And then the thirty thousand dollar town hall generator, CIP. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the thirty thousand dollar fire extraction equipment. You hope to be CIP if we can. Okay. So that's DRA mm -hmm. approval dependent. Mm -hmm. Fifty five thousand from CIP. Correct. Thirty thousand that's from taxation. Correct. Twenty five that's from the special fund. Correct. Five thousand comes from the conservation land. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. So not all of that is coming from taxation. Correct. Right. Most of it is well, not. Mostly actually. it's just the 30000 from the yeah. town hall assessment. Question. Mm -hmm. 278. Mm -hmm. We have a warrant. You're going to roll that over, the mm -hmm. boiler. Mm -hmm. Okay, on the warrant article that we had, it was 20000 coming out of SIP and 5000 coming out of taxation. doesn't show any coming out of taxation. Shouldn't it be? 5000 It was It was last year. That, that, the note section reflects 5000 was taxation, but this is the 2020 budget, so it's not 5000 of 2020 taxation. All the other notes pertain to what's happening in 2020. So you are quite right that 5000 came from taxation, for, for but that's for 19. That already happened. Right. So that's rolling over too? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the whole amount yeah. is rolling over. Okay. Yeah. Right. As long as I see that, okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so this is a small <coughs> source of support potentially, but the New Hampshire Preservation Alliance is a source for condition assessment money. It wouldn't be a lot. Like LCHIP, you could get 50% of it, but that's too big, too long. Not doesn't happen until June. You wouldn't know till next December. But New Hampshire Preservation Alliance makes grants every month. It, it's at maximum 7,000, but you know that's a potential source for um, the conditions assessment because it's a historic building. So, mm -hmm. and the other thing about that is you get other support too, kind of technical support as well, which is helpful. Good to know. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there anything to talk about in the reserve funds? I don't know what it would be. My only issue on that is I, I know you talk about Sligo culvert. Uh, the culvert is failing uh, on Rollins Road where the creek is. Uh, Andy Junaitis' home and Lewis Junaitis' home, that creek mm -hmm. that runs okay. just before Wentworth Greenhouse heading towards Dover. The state has been out there, the beavers are damming that, and they're starting to fail. Uh, so the, 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 that, that should be flagged and, and considered because... Uh, it's state, though. It's a state road. It's a state road. Yeah, so if it's a state road. Anyway, so so I'm state. just bringing that up because yeah. it's... So it wouldn't state. be our responsibility right. to fix right. the culvert? That's a state responsibility. Right. Yeah. Do you think yes. no? Is, do well, the state's been out there because they had to come in with heavy equipment <laughs> because it was starting to fail. So I don't know if, if we have to get that on the state schedule to get it fixed because that's, <coughs> that's, a, that's a problem. That road's starting to... Collapse. We're familiar with that. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I'm glad to know that it's a, it's a state yeah. responsibility anyway. Yeah. Do they still have, do they keep that up to date? There's the state projects that you could look at online. I don't know if you the know, online <laughs> list is up to date. They have, you know, like PDF, not like revolving, like updated lists, but they mm -hmm. have like annual yeah. lists. I can. I can see if that's on there, or you know, we can even reach out and find out what their plan is for that. Okay. But it's right. not, it's not for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I just, let me bring my my earlier comment full circle, and and because I'm assuming if I went through each of the individual departments, it would come up to this. And and Caroline, maybe you could explain. 
But if, again, if you look at the total operating budget for 2019, knowing that it's still another month left, I mean, even if you roll it up to 2.2 to .2 million, when you compare that to actually compare it to the approved budget for 2019, it's you can see that difference. And if you take that number and you compare it to the proposed budget for 2020, it's about a $300,000 difference, which would mean that we're appropriating more than we're planning. Well, we're, yes, it would be that we're appropriating, we're collecting in taxes more than most likely that we're going to spend. So you have, there's this other 300000 I'm assuming at the end of all that, it gives the select board some flexibility in moving things around for the unexpected, but it would also go into the reserve fund, right? Yes. So, and and I guess that comes to my earlier point is that, you know, instead of, instead of having that across the board, should we have a separate contingency line that says, hey, you should have $200,000 in the, in the, in the overall town budget that represents the building up of the uh, reserve fund instead of at the end of the year because right at the end of 2020 the odds are that we're going to have close to two three hundred thousand dollars left over in the overall town I'm not sure I agree with that assessment <laughs> I, I, okay. I I'm just going to put that out there you know I, I'm I'm highly reluctant to agree with that I, I'm sure that there will be funds given back um, right. but also things happen year to year and in every department there are you know, stories and situations of what happened to make the expenses turn out the way they did. That being said, I don't disagree with you that there are consistently funds that are turned back to the town at the end of the year that, that go into the general fund. I think the philosophy is that you budget for the places where you think that you are likely to need them. And, you know, rather than have a... I mean, you, you could take the approach of we'll just strap you down to only the bare minimum and you're not going to go over any of these lines but then we'll have a huge contingency but I'm not sure the, the effect would be any different in the end you're going to spend whatever you need to spend in those areas and right. so you know the board just historically has taken the flip approach where they you know the, the, the converse approach where they put the money in the budget lines where they think that they've got the potential to need it. Mm -hmm. I mean, but if you go back to 2017 the expenditures were probably about 8% less than the budget. 2018, about 10% less than the budget. So I guess to your point, it all depends. And, and right, it all comes down to the select board being able to do whatever they can do within it, right? There's, there's they, they only, you, only, you have control over the total budget. You can say, I'm not going to spend this much on the police department instead of. <laughs> So, is, is, I mean, as, as the Budget Committee should basically be saying, as we move through this process this year and the next year, you, you should probably always expect to have a 10% um, cushion. A cushion. A, a, a. One would hope that we would not put ourselves in a precarious situation where the nature of operations are that we are subject to emergencies. We have to handle hazards. We have to handle winter and weather where roads can get washed out and, you know, you have to buy however much salt you have to buy, you know, and, and that's expensive. And, and it's not always predictable. And when things, you know, when you have to spend money, the order of magnitude is often intense. And so, you know, one would hope that you're not spending every budget dollar. I, it, it's all about your philosophy, I yeah. guess, about how you budget. And I guess also, I, didn't we come up the fund balance? You actually have, the select board actually has less flexibility with the money in the fund balance versus the money in the overall operating budget. It, wasn't there some restriction on that if they, look, and, and I'm actually talking myself out of my idea. <laughs> well, because really saying, if you're putting the money into the yes, it actually says that. Why did I even come? But it's an education fund, so I'm trying to so realize Thank you. Right? So if we're saying if, if you're going to put it into the fund balance, it actually handcuffs the select board a little bit in terms of handling something well, unusual. The, the alternative would be to have a bigger um, contingency line item. That, yeah. 
Right. Um, so you're right. budgeting things closer to what you think they're going to be, but you've got a bit of contingency that. Yeah. Right. Because it would be better to have it in the contingency as part of the operating budget versus something in the fund balance, which I understand is something that is not as readily available to the town. Right. So that would be so. Right. All right. Yes. So it's really a, a line on. Do you want to have the overall 10% overages or the excess buffer? In the individual departments, which it's all under your control, mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. where you want to have it, and I guess it comes down to, are you, you know, does it help you? Does it help the department heads better manage to what they can spend? You know, I don't know, it, you know I'm sure. You know, it's, it's everything here is pretty repetitive, so they probably have a pretty good idea of what they're doing. One thing to add, Joe. I don't know where in your circle. No, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> One thing to add, though, is that so. You know, if, if the if the board is managing the budget, you know, appropriately as we think we like to think they are, and they're not just at the end of the year having some spending spree. Yes. While while we can't, while the board can't grab fund balance to, to pay for a current year expense at tax rate time, and I know that the boards that I've been on have done that. We have used the fund balance to help ameliorate the tax rate. Mm -hmm. So if it looks like the rate has gone like this, you can just sort of smooth it out, smooth a, little it out yeah. a little bit. So it's nice to have a healthy fund balance in order to help sure. with I'm that. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, you know, pay me now, pay me now, later. It, it, but it, it is, was a good observation to, to see good. that, that yes. health in there kind of consistently. Mm -hmm. So at least the blood budget planning, you get an idea. Maybe you could repurpose those fundings within that. Yes. So it, it seems that uh, right under the select board's control, they overall have a 10% buffer to run the town, which is good to have. I'm mm -hmm. not, I think that's a good thing to have versus you come to the end of the year Definitely. and have money yeah. to buy salt or all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, right, we do the quarterly meetings where we review expenses, and if something were out of control, that would be the time to see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. But you made us think outside the box, which was really appreciated. No, really. I mean, I think the conversation that you good. made us have, it really helped to see in a different way. Got us through it quicker, maybe. Monday night, number twenty-six. <laughs> so, um, is there any other business? Next meeting. No, meeting. Yes. 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 What time? So we get that right. Six thirty. Six thirty at, at at the school. Oh. Oh, Should yes. we oh, think about moving the eighteenth to six o'clock? Since we haven't really finalized any budgets. Yeah. Um, next meeting's the eleventh at the school. Six thirty at the school. The school budget is next week. Six thirty next week. Okay. School budget. Charlie's. And, and Charlie, you gotta text me early. Yeah, I'll text. <laughs> Suzanne will chair the meeting next week. I have to travel for work. No, but I'm talking about the eighteenth. Which is which is to the time we're going to finalize all of the yeah. uh, all the budget. I, I, how does what's the, the feeling that we do we need more time on the 18th to deliberate <laughs> over? <laughs> we we maybe until 10, so maybe a good idea. I'm sorry to start. <laughs> start going late. Start early. <laughs> not, not everybody can be here early. That's why I brought it up. Yeah. Uh, does anybody have a problem being here by 6 o'clock no. on the 18th? No. 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 Sounds good. I'm okay with it. Um, so if, it's, if we start a little early and we end a little early, great. We'll make sure that the announcement comes out uh, properly this time. Sorry about that. Can I ask a question about next week, the meeting that I'm chairing? Is there anything, so, so the place, you're going to do it on the 7th. You'll provide all the material that we need. Okay, it's being posted or it is posted. So all of that is also, I just have to show up the chair, is that correct? Yes, mm -hmm. and, and the presentation will be uh, by the superintendent. Uh, yeah. Uh, Can we get another ahead of time? Yeah. The budget? Yeah.
uh, yeah, let me make sure, but okay. we have a meeting tomorrow, um, so 5 o'clock of the meeting, and then workshop. our um, regular school board meeting we pushed up from next week to this week, so we can make sure we have everything um, settled for next week, so I don't see a reason why, you know, at least by Monday we should be able to have something for you, preferably by Friday, but... So yeah. do we have a motion? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Yes, we Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.